Hi, everybody, and welcome back to the Iowan Adventures, a rule, a rule, a world created and ruled by the Fae. We're starting off strong. It's been a while. So, um, my name is Jessica. I go by I Sneeze Stars online in places like TikTok and Instagram. Um, and I will be your shenanigan sovereign for the night, except for during combat tonight, in which um, the speed of candy will be helping me because... I'm broken and I'm having a really hard time just manipulating the mouse. So um, let me run you through the games that we have on our channel. Uh, la, 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 la. Tonight, obviously, the Iowan Adventures. Uh, tomorrow night at 7.30 p.m. EST, uh, GM'd by Cuddlesworth, is our Shadowrun campaign, The State of the Union, which Daniel and I are both in. Uh, Thursday nights, we have The Lost Continent by Mr. Markham at 9, 9 p.m. EST. We've changed that. Uh, Friday nights, we have The Legends of Kralis at 10.30, sometimes 11 uh, p.m. EST. Uh, TTRPG created and GM'd by the legend, uh, the Telerius Game Master. I need to make myself notes for this. And then starting the 11th, we have uh, every Saturday, we have the Moonstone Matriarchy um, at 9 p.m. EST. That's enough of me and my talking. Um, James. Hi, I'm James. Uh, <laughs> tonight I'll be playing uh, mostly uh, Art of Days Arc, our human circle of stars druid uh, maybe with a few hints of varian arbor the uh, sort of smarmy storm sorcerer who shares a body with him uh so stay tuned in case that gets a little bit freaky for you um carol why don't you say hi hello i'm carol um i will be playing gilly Ghislaine, our um barbarian slash warlock um, you can find me on the internet at Imaginary Hero and Corner Hero, some other places, mostly on TikTok. That's me, Daniel. That's me. Hi, everybody. Uh, you can find me as the Speed of Candy on all of the various internet places. Tonight, I will be playing Damascus Silver, the half-elf bard warlock who, who's got a plan looking at all these statues and got a plan i will also be playing a giant snake who will be trying his <laughs> very best to eat the entire party i have been given leeway to do so by the dm so if they die it's not my fault not it uh the snakes. i believe you uh wrote our intro or intro our recap for us i did uh i tried so let's uh let's get into the the meat and potatoes as it were, of, of last session. Uh, so on last session, episode 70, uh, the Tree of Three, uh, the drama unfolded quickly as the group realized they needed to meet up with a Rev, find Raybella, the Tiefling's mother, and somehow make Belloth cry in order to get a tear which will help <laughs> finish a potion that can make someone a god. Events unfolded... Uh, Steamily? <laughs> As a rev made it back to the Druid's Drove Tavern, where Callum, the hot ranger NPC, was waiting for their date. After a rev revealing he was finally emotionally okay for the first time ever, they decided their date is more of an interior excursion, uh, where we smartly fade to black. Uh, a lot of things unfolded quickly overnight, like Damascus taking note of Gilly's new warlock powers, the details being revealed of the trees of three, and ley lines of power running through the realm. Damascus also runs into Winter, who returned home, confessing to the bard that Winter had pursued Tamina, or so Tamina, the goddess of darkness, in order to achieve some sort of miracle that might revive his host body's true soul. Uh, BG3 reference right there. That of <laughs> Threven, the lost brother of the party's Phaza. Uh, as he cries to Damascus, it is revealed that Phaza 2 has been reaching out to Tamina in, a, in, a, in an attempt to repair their rift, but also to repair Threven's soul and place in this timeline. A rev overnight had a prophetic dream of the past, 
or perhaps simply a revelation of Varian's past, and his sacrifice at the foot of the tree Varian's soul has been trapped in for the last few thousand years. Rapid fire. A Rev and Callum wake up together. They're very cute. Gilly walks with Nana Ira, the spirit in the water. Very wholesome. Callum shares he discovers the House of Stars, a holy site in mountains nearby. A Rev suggests we split the party, but before he does so, Roy Arbor charges in and convinces all of us to transport via plants to save the mother of Raybella. <laughs> we arrive beneath the canopy of what I assume to be one of the Tree of Three, where a Rev discovers the petrified body of Phaeus. His now discovered sister destroyed. This hints at the creature known as a basilisk, and there's hissing from the branches above us, which is where we pick up at episode 71. Hey, I'm so proud of you. That was so good. That was good. Okay. 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 So you hear hissing above you and down from the tree, you heard the last, at the last session, you heard that giant snake on just lower itself to the ground. You heard the grass moving and Everyone roll for initiative, because as this basilisk charges, you can kind of vaguely out of the corner of your eye see like this mottled like green brown of its skin. You can see that its jaws are definitely sharp and lined with two very large dagger like teeth. A f- like you can smell the foul smelling saliva that drips from its mouth as as it's like open and charging you um the stench of its breath is just slightly overwhelming because you're like oh that's that's definitely not good and the ground behind it becomes slick with this viscous green fluid that seems to ooze from its scales as it rockets towards you good great uh, this seems awesome <laughs> bad we got this um a rev give me yours if you please initiative oh okay sorry i was like <laughs> uh, yes absolutely um i need the right dice for this oh that's gonna be a solid um yeah bleh, 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 plus dex is oh hey right i increased my dex recently um 13 13? 13 23. Oh. Nice. Gilly's fast. You have advantage. You have a right? very good deck. You, you got that. Would you like shit. To, would you like to please as well? Yes. Oh, yeah. Wait. I do have advantage. I didn't roll with advantage, actually. Okay. No, that one was the higher oh, one. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Hi. Winter. Uh, nine. <clears throat> okay. Could Correct. You please. This cat is going to be the death of me. Okay, these two tied. We've got the greater decks. Cool. All right. Gilly, you are up first. Um, you should have access to the roll 20 map. Oh yeah. Snake, you cannot see. Give me a second. I will move Snake into position. Uh Jess, you said the snake was just kind of in front of the tree or right above us. In front of the tree. It? Beauty. Snake is in front of the tree. And bam, now you can see it. Because ah. it's doing it's an ad. Scary right snake. Yes. Don't want it. I'm a big snake. Don't want it. No, stop moving closer. Now I can yes. see the snake. Oh no. Snake. <laughs> yeah. Stop the it. Snake hisses and approaches you. Dislike. Green dripping from its fangs, its eyes oh, searching for its next prey. I gotta remember all the stuff that my tribe can do because I'm gonna want to use it. <laughs> oh, oh, oh! Okay. Don't forget. This auto. is the text for my trident, guys. So there it's got a lot of. <laughs> I'm so sorry. <laughs> Holy <laughs> hot <complicated>. damn! <laughs> that is a lot of stuff. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Wild. Sorry, I am still recovering from my own sickness. I apologize for the cough. Yeah, no, we're, we'll just hack up lungs throughout this. Um, <laughs> it'll be very dramatic. Yeah. 
Okay. Okay. I I'm gonna try to it, I guess. Wait, how long how far is that? That is like is each square feet. ten? Each square is five. five so from okay. you, you're looking at thirty feet. Thank you. Big snake man. Technology. Okay. So oh god, do I wanna go close to it though? Not really, but I will. I'm gonna yeah. I'm gonna okay. rage first, I guess, would be step one. Okay. Let's roll my little crazy thing. I gotta do this to where it's easier to find. Okay, a one on my wild surge table is shadowy tendrils lash around you. Each creature of your choice that you can see within 30 feet of you must succeed on a- within 30 feet! Oh, dang it, I should have done this after. Whatever. But succeed in a consultation to... Okay. I gain 1d12 temporary hit points, though. So that's good. Nice. Uh, what's my snake got to do? On. Your snake does not have to do anything because it's five feet too far away, unfortunately. Um, uh, but, uh... okay. But I'm going to rage and then... Wait, so I don't forget it. <laughs> Otto's going to rage with me. Okay? Ready? Okay. <gasps> He's so mad. Angry so Otto. mad. <laughs> okay, so now we're mad and we're gonna run it and and we're gonna try to end him. Hopefully. Does a okay 19 plus Yeah, 19 yes. plus hits. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay, cool. So sorry, I should have made myself a flow chart. Okay. Okay. We've been off for a month. We're I'm gonna seven. do tidal surge with it, which is gonna do additional damage. But first, let's do the regular damage. Okay. 1d6 plus 7. Excellent. Wait. <laughs> Guys. Mm -hmm. I am struggling here. <laughs> okay. It's actually plus 9 plus seven. because you're raging. Oh, thank you. And then plus an additional 2d6 for the tidal surge. Of bludgeoning damage. Okay. So that is uh five ten plus nine nineteen damage. And then also the big snake must make a strength saving throw with a DC of fifteen. Damage, big snake, strength saving throw. How strong could it possibly be? Right, uh, it's just a giant doesn't snake. matter too much if you roll a three. Ooh. Oh, that's fair. So, it's details. it is forcefully propelled back by ten feet and knocked prone. So okay. can a snake fuck be that knocked snake. prone? I don't, I don't know. That's a good can. question. It can <laughs> be like I feel like you can't knock a snake prone. flipped over on its so, back. Uh, maybe you were here. The one. I feel like it can be knocked prone. It just can get up really easily. Yeah, <laughs> maybe. I'm I'm just gonna move you up to where you were if that's okay. One, two, three, four, five, six. Okay. Okay. So I can do that thing where I get the extra damage equal to half my strength modifier. I can do that two more times. Get down. I get just down. saw her just yelling. Get <laughs> like she's gonna I hate her. me. <sighs> oh wait, I, give up. I crit I crit on a 19 or 20. <clears throat> oh, that was a crit. With this. And it has an additional, hold on, more stuff. Duty six lightning damage. More because stuff. cool, let's try it. Okay, six more. Six more damage. Yes. Okay. Okay, that's all my turn things. <laughs> um, Wait, I, and oh, I have two attacks. <laughs> you do have two attacks. Do it. You're out of range of him <laughs> now. So you'd have to move oh, closer yeah, you're if right. you can. Okay. Okay. You pushed him back. Um, what is my movement? He's about to start yeah, kissing. 40, Forty feet. You've got 40 another feet 10. of movement. Do I? Okay. Cool. Yeah. So let's see if we can do this again, man. Uh, a natural one on that one. You got really excited. This is the first time she ever used all of that stuff on the trident, so she was just very blown away. Amazing. So you run up to the snake. Charge your trident with watery energy. Hear your grandmother, aunt. Who was it that you're that you're bonded with? Granny. Your granny. You hear Granny's voice in the back of your head. 
Snake goes flying <laughs> backwards as water rushes out of the, the trident, knocking him down. Howell, he's got some, some, some shenanigans he can do too. Oh no. As you were rushing towards the snake, you were looking right at him so you could get a nice, oh, solid hit on the actual snake. I was looking at his tail. <laughs> he forces you to meet his eyes. I'm going to need a... Oh, you're a barbarian. You're fine. I'm going to need a constitution saving throw. Oh, Mom, don't say... Don't jinx me. Listen, I literally just watched her not Shit. be able to get popcorn into her mouth. I'm <laughs> right. pretty... <laughs> it's on the floor somewhere. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's a nine. Oh, okay. Um, You failed the saving throw by five or more. Great. <laughs> I'm going to read the skill on this thing that Jess put here that I did not put here. Just going to point that out. Uh Uh, You can force the creature to make a DC 15 constitution saving throw if the basilisk isn't incapacitated and can see the creature. If If the saving throw fails by five or more, the creature is instantly petrified. See it. Uh. Um. So. Your pet, uh, Jess. Yeah. You're the DM. Can I give her bardic inspiration as a reaction? Yes, you can. You can bardic. You can reaction bardic ins- inspiration. Okay. I would like to throw a bardic inspiration at Gilly as a reaction as I see her start to turn to stone. Just Thank yell you, out, buddy. "Gillet, don't look at the things as. Try and look away." Oh, good night. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> uh, bardic is a D10 for me. Okay. Now. Um, where are my tens? Where are you? That's a 12. Yeah, here you are. Okay, that's an additional 10. Okay, there you go. So now we're at 19. (laughs) You pass, you're fine. Nothing bad happens to you. I had a real moment where I saw that zero, though. (laughs) Uh huh. Wait, I can't get a zero. Okay, (laughs) (laughs) no. Um, okay, that's that. Cool. At the after your turn, I mean, yep, you're right in front of it. It's going to use two legendary actions to mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Uh, attempt to grapple you. It is going to swirl up around you and just squeeze. I need a DC 17 strength or dexterity saving throw. Okay, Dan, hmm? Dan, turn around. What mm. are you doing? Oh, we're Dan. good. We're good on that. You good? Okay. Uh, hey. You are not restrained. <laughs> uh, beginning to the, you're good. Okay. Awesome. Uh, Damascus will step forward and he's going to look around at all of these destroyed statues that are just crumbled into pieces everywhere and just go, all right. So you're a basilisk. That means that you. Well, I'm guessing these are all your victims. Something tells me they're going to want to get a little bit of revenge. And he's going to cast uh, Animate Objects Ooh. on as many fists as he can so that they can punch the Basilisk in in return for having been turned to stone. Uh, I, I make ten flying fists fly up into the air. and Two of those are Phaluses. Were they attached to her? Not anymore. No. <laughs> no. Well, she I... was crumbled. <laughs> Not anymore. <laughs> Not anymore. They rip off. <laughs> you, you, you see one crack off and you're like, ooh. Punch them. Uh, as a bonus action, I can mentally command them and they keep doing it until they can no longer do it. So I'm going to just tell them, punch the giant snake. And have them punch the giant snake as much as they can. There are ten tiny fists. I need to roll ten attack rolls. This is what the internet is for. Roll ten d twenty, and they have a plus eight to hit. Oof, those are bad rolls. What's your AC? AC. Okay, plus eight. Seriously, only three of them hit. That's the worst. Of 10 dice, 
all but three were below 10. We're below all but three Aww. were below six. Jeez. But that's just rude. Yeah. But three of them hit. Four, three D4 plus four damage. I think. D4 plus four. No, oh, so it's three D4 plus twelve. Still does 20 damage. I'll take it. There's a bunch of fists just start pummeling the snake, punching it in as many places as it possibly can. And I will hop up onto my flying cat. And I will fly yeah. up towards the giant I'm snake. Gonna, I'm going to need you to me. make me um, an animal. <laughs> Handling <laughs> with advantage because it's, it's your cat, but you hey, are on board. We've established that pause is on board. <laughs> I know we did not establish that. I did say you were gonna have to train her, train him in, or her into this. Fair enough. Give me a second because you on. are riding a cat, okay? And uh, not just a and- cat, a tressum. Animal handling check. I'm good at I actually got a plus four in that somehow. You have advantage too. Okay. Uh 18. All right. Pause is on board. My Mount my cat and take off. And I fly up beside Gilly. That is my turn for Rev. Hello. So, obviously, I've just witnessed the hands rip off of the body of my sister, and and I, I briefly look over at Roy's face, who is is distraught and kneeling beside this statue beside me. He's, he's got and... the face in his arms, like in his hands. Oh no! <laughs> and. I just quickly reach across the the corpse and and I lay a hand on Roy's shoulder and I say they deserved better, I'm sorry. At, at least let me go now and try and avenge them. And yes. I unsling this beautiful wondrous bow from my back and there's this soft humming that comes from the string down down the the side of it that elicits the song of a summer's breeze and i look ahead gazing as much as i can towards gilly and trying to leave the spaces behind sort of in my peripheral vision and as I hold the bow in front of me I trace my fingers down the string until the string itself begins to erupt in vibrant white flame which is unique because the string doesn't seem to be consumed by it and as I pull my bow up in front of me I knock my fingers to the front of it and draw my hands back along, pulling a silver arrow of flame out of thin air. And I aim it just over Gilly's shoulder and I say, Gods, I hope you burn. And I flick this arrow out of the bow, uh, rolling with my produce flame cantrip uh, that I'm awesome. shooting through Amelia's bow. Um, if Are you looking at the snake when you do it? I, I'm aiming over Gilly's shoulder, so I'm like trying to look through my peripheral vision. Okay, I'm not. So di- then, I'm not directly looking. Then you're rolling with disadvantage. Okay. Yeah. So, does eighteen hit? Eighteen does hit. Cool, because it was it was a twenty five or an eighteen, and so disadvantage. I will take an 18 for sure. Um do, 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 do. Um I'm gonna just quickly look at that beautiful 3d8 fire damage. 
Gosh, I love high level cantrips. Mm -hmm. All right, let's get some satisfying dice rolling noises. Come on. Oh, that was good. Uh, 13. 13 points of fire damage. Okay. I and love it. As a bonus action, though, as I've launched this silver uh, flamed arrow, and if anybody was looking at me, they'd see as the flames briefly trail back up my arm, and as it burns up my flesh, behind is left behind the celestial glow as I bonus action take on my starry form of the archer, and I simply let this constellation and this glow glide up my skin until my eyes light with white light, that eerie, those eerie glowing white irises that are one of the most notable distinctions of my form. And as soon as I launch the first arrow, I begin to spin my body around, summoning a second radiant bolt and attaching it uh, to the bow and launching that as my bonus action from my constellation archer form. Uh, uh, which I will also make with disadvantage, but I would just like to, bonus action, fire that off. Okay. Um, uh, I think that is a 16. 16 does not hit. Okay, that's that's fine. I, I rolled really badly with that one. I rolled a 7 out of 5. Because it's a ranged spell attack, so it yeah. would use my spell attack modifier, which is plus 11, so... Okay, so then yeah, so sixteen. So the the second bolt like fires a little wide, but I I'm not gonna say expected that, but wanted to give it a shot anyways. And uh, mm -hmm. I, I I stand there, glittering and cascading light out around me, encompassing Roy, Faes, and my body in this star pattern across the ground, and that is the end of my turn. Okay. Fire still licking off of the scales of the basilisk from your attack. It is going to go and it is up next. It's going to uh, make its melee attacks. It's going to attack Gilly. She's right in its face and it is not happy about it. Uh, Gilly's not in a great spot. Mm -hmm. But if you close your eyes, <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> Gilly is, for the record, trying very hard not to look at this thing right now. Yes, which is why it gets to roll with advantage. Yeah, good. Uh, okay, uh, twenty-eight for the first hit. Uh, yeah, that hits. <laughs> uh, and actually, we'll do that after the second one's probably going to hit too. That'll be twenty-three, but it might not be at you. Um, you take nine piercing damage. You're raging, right? Yeah. So that gets halved to four. And uh, 14 poison damage, which does okay. not get halved, I don't think. Because you're And I have yeah. unstable backlash, so I get to use the wild magic table again. Ha ha! Hell yeah. Okay, five this time. Let's see. Ugh, you should. If I click on that, it should take me to the table. Come on. Good thing. Okay, here's my table. What did I say? Five. Um. Whenever a creature hits me with an attack roll before my rage ends, that creature takes one d six force damage, in retribution. Does okay. that count right now, or would it be the next one? I would say right now makes sense. Yeah. Ha ha. There's five damage for you, Snake. Five damage. Oh, yeah. Cool. Screw you. Screw you, Snake. And um, then, I don't know, is that a reaction? Yeah, I guess it is. Okay, carry on. <laughs> okay. So, Snake comes up to you, takes a nice big old chomp. A bang pierces into your shoulder, injecting you with some of its poison, and it pulls back, and you come with it as you are grappled in the snake's mouth. Great. Yes. James. I, I would just like to, um, as we are entering combat, 
officially declare both on camera and to um, my DM and DM assistant, uh, Mr. Combat Man. Um, I, I just rolled for my wheel or woe um, ability because I'm supposed to do that with long rests. And so we haven't talked about it. I rolled a six. So I have my wheel ability. Which is like reaction. I can add bonuses to things. Nice. Very nice. Okay, cool. I just wanted that to be. I'm not doing it now. Mm-hmm. I'm like telling you now. So if I do it later, it's it's like, you know about it's it. Legit. Yes. Okay. Fair enough. Um, amazing. So it now has Gilly in its mouth, which means it cannot hit her with its tail. So it's yeah. gonna fl- it's gonna take Gilly and head on up to. Guess Damascus. I didn't say how high I was flying, but I don't think I went very high. Wait, no, it can't Wee. run away. It has Gilly. No, it must stay. Oh, it's it's staying, but it's coming over here I with Gilly. Swear to God, I better have a hold. And monster. it's whipping its tail out at Damascus. Four. Uh, I already rolled that. Fourteen plus nine is twenty-three. Damascus is AC is twenty-one. Uh, I'll cast shield. <clears throat> no, I can't cast shield. I used a reaction to help. No, that was... Hang on. What's that? I've had my turn since then. I got my reaction back. I cast shield. And bam. AC goes up, and I'm good to go. That's the risk. No hit. Okay. It is Beza's turn. Beza will try and help Gilly. Uh, Gil- Gilly, do you want to get out of there? That would be great, actually. Thank you. Beza will cast Vortex Warp and just warp you out of the thing. Oh, now. nice. <laughs> just... Did Faza well... look at it? Oh, shit. Faza would have to look at it to do that. What if Faza looked just, just at Gilly? <laughs> Face look just again, man. Vortex warp. Just That'd be a creature really you see within like range, and you're right perfectly. in its mouth. Yeah, Faza would have to look at it. <laughs> She's a sorcerer. Her con's mm. probably pretty good. Okay, yeah, Faza would do, would try and help Gilly. Uh, you are vortex warped out of the snake to like right beside the snake. Mm-hmm. Okay, but I'm gonna stay back here. And then I will roll a con save for Faza. What is the DC of this con save? 15. She's fine. She has a plus nine. Six or higher. Nice. Let's go. Right now. 19. She rolled a 28. She's so fine. Uh, otherwise, it's stone. It is not. On a success, she's, she's a beast fine. con wise. Yeah. Yeah, she has 20 con yeah. somehow. That it doesn't is... even need a bottle of water. She can just handle oh. the whole con. She's such a beast. I just realized I used the wrong con modifier on my roll earlier. I would have been fine. <laughs> That's okay, good to know. Fine anyway. <laughs> oh, you used your con modifier and not your spell save? Or your yeah. Save? <laughs> gotcha. Yeah. Uh, Okay, Winter. What is Winter doing? Winter. Winter is sighing very dramatically. <laughs> As he is uh, having a moment of can't we just not fight for like five <laughs> seconds like we were doing a thing and like it was important uh, <laughs> he slings down his warhammer and is going to uh, approach um, and grumbling the whole time as he, he, he approaches forward because he's just like got to do the saving, people get the stolen, they got to do the things and, the, bah. <laughs> and he just I think he is going to confidently actually look at the basilisk and take his attacks. Because that, okay. that, that, 
That feels like a winter thing. He's like grumbling and he's not looking up, but then as he gets right to it, he just raises his eyes and his warhammer and he says, like, go down. And like oh, just yeah, comes in swinging. That feels uh, really good. I love it. Yeah, he would. It's he, he would, would, right? Like yeah. that is a he would. That is a winter thing. So uh we need to grab his Vitor's Forge hammer. Um <clears throat> so he's gonna make his two attacks. Uh attack number one. Oh, uh oh yeah, we don't use flanking rules, right? No. No. Okay, perfect. So attack number oh boy. Attack number one is a 14, which I know doesn't hit. Attack number two is a 27. 27 will hit. Okay. So like he he raises his eyes up and he like goes to swing and like he gets that momentum going and then he kind of like realizes oh this thing is kind of intimidating and he like slows down but he's like no nah, it's time and he pulls back even farther and like brings it back back in and just absolutely hammers the forge hammer like straight into the scaled hide it is scaled right yeah. yes it's scaled yeah straight into the scaled hide at, with like two-handed brutality um so let's get some damage on that we love and, when he gets vicious. Uh, he also has Oh yeah, okay. It was improved divine smite, right? It's sorry, I got distracted for a second because I thought that um he had that cleric thing where the the strikes deal extra damage. Or it's like Im- improved damage, but like that's a cleric thing. Not I don't think so. He has he? no. He well, has he said, improved divine smite, which every time he hits, smite. every time he hits, he adds a d8 radiant damage, regardless of whether he smites or not. Oh, oh, sweet. Yeah. Okay, yeah. so it's just, it's just weirdly worded because it's improved divine smite. Yeah, I know, but it has like nothing to do with smiting. Okay, cool. I so, uh, so then that's one d eight plus five. So five plus Uh, so 11 plus, oh, perfect. So it was 11 bludgeoning followed by eight radiant. Is he smiting on that or just? No, it was just, uh, just one attack to hit. Fair enough. Okay. Um, at the end of his turn. He did look at it. He did look at it, so I need a con save. Thank you for reminding me. Mm-hmm. Yeah, thanks, Joe. He's, he's a paladin. Yeah. He's fine. You're I welcome. See, I mean, he's got plus plus seven to it. Yeah. So he's see. a beefy boy. Now you one. got a seventeen. Seventeen passes. Cool. Um and. Legendary action, Snake is going to try to grapple him. Doesn't he uh, have someone in his mouth, or did she get out? She got, got out, out, and the grappling oh. is not in his mouth. It's It wraps around. Yeah. 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 Got two uh, so different he's gonna ways. Try and, he's going to try and wrap around. It's called a coiling maneuver. He's going to try his coiling remover, maneuver on Winter. <laughs> remover. <laughs> it, it is coiling a remover. coiling remover. It's the remover from combat. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so You're done. Strength or dexterity saving throw. Uh, strength or dexterity. Um, I'm assuming strength. He will. Oh yeah, he'll go strength for sure. Uh, twenty six. Snake tries to wrap around him. Winter just no. I don't think so. <laughs> And just steps out. We know that you about consent. <laughs> I, I, we are. It's not a hugger. I feel. 
I feel like it's even like more like he literally just like slammed down with a hammer, right? And then this like tail comes in as a, as a like a response. I feel like he just like brute strength pulls the hammer back and literally does this thing where he palms it <laughs> so that the the it coils on the edges of the hammer and then he like pushes himself into a like upright handstand on the hammer, rips the hammer out and then lands on its feet behind the snake and just like pat dusts some scales off the hammer and just goes the fuck was that but, I mean, <laughs> okay. that's what he he's now. getting sassy okay <laughs> there was sick money good job thank you <laughs> thank you Yuli, it, it felt pretty turn. cool okay okay i have a well. question is it an action to summon auto uh i think it's bonus right it doesn't say it's a feat I don't know. We can say it's a bonus action. It doesn't say? It doesn't say. It's not okay, we can, it's not a fine familiar, just, it's like, just a thing that I have. So you can just call him then. Okay. Otto's here. Hooray. Um okay. and I I want to see because the thing that Otto can do is he can spray an ink cloud that obscures an area that's oh. five feet. So I'm thinking maybe if he ink clouds the snake's head, that could maybe help. I don't know if it's specifically the head that is the... We'll see. We'll see. So he's going to do that and also use his little tentacle power. Let me find his little tentacle power. Um, okay. Go, Otto. Go, Otto, go. Is that an attack no, roll that he's doing? he's gonna miss. He does have an attack oh. roll. He got eight. I assume that the AC is higher than eight. Yeah. It would have been <laughs> yeah. one hit point anyways, but still. The <laughs> inking is just counts. like, he squirts. He's, yeah. he's, he's like in he the area and he he like nervously poots. He poots. Like it's technically supposed to be underwater, but I feel like since he's an ethereal octopus, <laughs> then it should probably work. <laughs> We're shenanigating hard. It's ethereal um, ink. <laughs> yeah, I'll I'll allow him to to squirt and just like poot. Because you try <laughs> holding an octopus in place, please. No, he's he can be in the same area as people. He's very squirmy. Uh, is there a save or anything that the snake does, or is it just it has? There's not a save. Now. The area is heavily obscured for one minute. I will leave it up to you whether that like follows the head around or if it's just obscured um, it, while it, it will not uh, follow the head around. It's just the it five. Make it's sense just that anyone. five foot square. But like, yeah, there's no say for that. Please, you just got inked in the face. There's yeah, no like for the oh, moment. <laughs> it's it's in the air around you. Okay, so for the moment, it's it's inked. Okay, because like inked for the moment. Mm -hmm. And then I would like to. Um, Let's see. Then I'm going to try some of my new shit. <laughs> I'm going to summon yeah. a tentacle. Yeah. Huzzah. A tentacle. Now this this is a bonus action. I create a 10 foot long tentacle at a point I can see within 60 feet of you. That point is going to be right next to Snake. Um, Last for a minute. Okay. And then I can make a me melee spell attack against one creature within 10 feet of it. I assume just with my melee stats. Uh, release spell 15. attack is your spell attack bonus. Hmm. Where's my spell attack bonus? Think. What do I use? Wisdom, I think? Uh, charisma. Mm, charisma. Spell attack bonus is a, if you go into spells, it'll be right at the top, like um, above you. all of your spells. Aha! Yes. Okay, so that's a 20 to hit. That'll hit. Excellent. Okay. Then my tentacle uh, does... Uh, 1d8 cold, cold damage and its speed is reduced by 10 feet until okay. the start of my next turn. Uh, so that's 5 feet. cold damage five cold from damage. Tentacle. Hells yeah. Oh. Tentacle. <laughs> Very exciting. Oh, we're choosing dice. Uh oh. Ooh. Nice. Carefully I drew the tentacle choosing on the dice. Map, if you see it, it's that little pink guy. Okay. Oh, excellent. Thank you. Um, and then my second attack, I'm just gonna I'm just gonna hit it with my pointy thing, I think. Cause um, I like doing that. Okay, that's gonna be 
Does a 16 hit? It does not. Shit. Okay, well, I have a tentacle now, and Otto did his thing, so that's something. Don't you have two attacks? I do, that was my second. Well, my first attack was the tentacle, right? Tentacle's bonus action. Oh, well, summoning it was bonus action. Hold on. Hmm? Oh, yeah, and when I create it, I can make a spell attack. Okay, cool. So, second attack. (laughs) Wow. Okay, that's going to be a 17. Does a 17 hit? Seventeen does hit, and now okay. you know it's AC. Now we know the AC. <laughs> um, okay, and I'm gonna do the other special damage thing. I'm gonna do the tidal surge again, so I get an extra two d six. So we're doing three d six again. So eight nine plus nine is eighteen. Yes. And then I guess go ahead and make a strength saving throw again for the title surge. Uh, that is a 21 this time. Okay, that saves. That's fine. Okay. Uh, give me that damage again. Sorry. Oh, sorry. That was uh, 18 damage. 18. Thank you. Awesome. Is it, okay. If it matters what types it is, split type, but okay. No. As long as it's not poison. Believe it or not, giant snakes, hard to poison. <laughs> it's fair. Um, awesome. You weren't looking. It has ink on its face. It's not happy about that. It will. It's like its whole deal. It must be very that's, that's, upset. It, that's what it does. Uh, it's going to lash out with its tail swipe as a its last legendary action, and hit. There's three people it could hit. We're going to ask the dice. One and two is Damascus. Three and four is Winter. Five and six is Gilly. That is a one. He's going to whip it at Damascus. Would you say, Jess, would you say he has disadvantage because of the stuff on his face? Yeah. Cool. With disadvantage doesn't matter. I rolled an 18 and a 16. That's a 20. Five to hit Damascus, which does not hit because Damascus is still shielded from last round. Never mind. That's his round. Uh, on Damascus's turn, I'm going to have my uh, fists go first, and I'm going to fist him. <laughs> okay. <laughs> yeah, um, you can fist the snake. Fist the snake. I rolled 10 d20s plus 8. Uh, 17 AC means that I need to roll a 9 or higher. 1, 2, 3 misses. That's 7 hits and a nat 20. Or 7 hits including a nat 20. So that's okay. 7. I'm, tra- I'm rolling this all online. There's so many. 7 D4 plus 7 times 4 is 28. And then 1 extra D4. So that's 8 D4 plus 28 damage for my fists. That's 47 damage to the snake. The snake is not happy. That's a good spell. It. Oh my god. That's not happy. That's a good you, spell. Uh, definitely said catch these hands. Yeah. <laughs> well, I do now. It did not. No. And it just, <laughs> them. Bam, bam, bam. Little tiny fists just start bashing into the snake every possible opening, hitting it in the eyes. One of it hits into like I don't know, whatever a snake has instead of a butt. And it just just everywhere. Little fists. What? Just hit it in the spine. Yeah. Over and over Chloe. again. Over and over and over again. It's gotta be a cloaca, right? It's probably, it's probably a cloaca. It's probably some sort of cloaca. I don't cloaca. know. I no. don't want to yeah. know. <laughs> hits it directly. One of the fists hits it directly of a like larger person. Maybe like a, I don't know, a beefy dwarf or something. Just right in the cloaca. Hey. Now um, I want to. Now I have to know. <laughs> Are you googling what snakes have instead of a butt? Yeah. I no, it's it. cursed knowledge. No. <laughs> and Damascus will attack. He is not going to look away because he doesn't have to. Yeah. Uh, they do Damascus have a cloaca. Absolutely hits. That makes sense, though. Uh, Damascus hits with. He is going to cast Belloth's Brilliant Blade. Um, how many 
D8. And make a con save. Why? You looking at him? He's got goo in his face. Oh, son of a bitch. It lasts for a minute. <laughs> it lasts for a minute until he son moves. He moved. He's got goo face. He's uh, got goo face. <laughs> goo. That is 3d8 plus whatever. I'm fucking sitting here backseat DMing. No, it's fine. <laughs> Bring it. Five, you gotta keep nine. us honest. Yeah, you, you can only do that if you pay attention for the entire thing. <laughs> I've been like zoning out as I look at things. And then hey, look, is Dan's running the shots right now, but you're still calling the shots. <laughs> okay, pay attention then. I gotta pay attention. Okay, so that is seven, 27 damage from Damascus just slicing into the giant snake. And then pause gets to go. Right. Yep. I I stacked you good. Yeah. Yeah. Pause makes two attacks. One bite, one claw. And bite first. Bite misses. Claws next. Claws hit. 21 damage. And I don't for look at 21 to hit. And do. 15 slashing damage. Nice. Go, kitty. Okay. Bam. bam. Snake's turn. Snake, by the way, is looking quite rough after that. I think they did like 80-something damage. Um, nice. Snake is going to move his More stupid head out of the way. Who is he most willing to take an opportunity attack from? Uh, he's going to move. I'm trying to think. Uh, he'll move here and let Damascus take a swing. He will. That, uh, yeah, Damascus will take a swing. Oh, Damascus misses. Was not expecting him to run. Um, okay. Snake is out of the cloud of goop. He's going to try to... Uh, he's going to bite Gilly. Keeps hitting him with water. He doesn't like it. He likes poison. That's fair. Gilly and does a make... 21 hit. It does. Okay. Gilly, you take... 16 poison, uh, sorry, 16 piercing damage, halved to 8, eight. and 12 poison damage. Four. And you are grappled. Freaking snake. snake. <laughs> Did he, he want to, to hug you? you. He loves oh, me no, so grappled, much. You're grappled in his mouth. He okay. wants to eat you. He wants to eat me. I'm delicious. Eat you so I tasted the sea. a little salty. It is like seafood. Let me just bite on its tail. No, I can't do it until next round. Damn it. He really wants to eat you, but he has to wait a whole round between biting you and swallowing you. That <laughs> sucks for him. Yeah, Ooh, we designed that. that. Yeah. Almost like we don't want a TPK. Right? <laughs> Almost. Ah, almost. You know, I'm just saying. The snake is very diligent. He spends a good six seconds making sure he's fully swallowed. He's fully chewed his food before he swallows. Mm -hmm. So that's what's that's happening important. To you right now. Uh, so yes. he'll tail more diligent he'll than I am. Sorry, <laughs> 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 in my mouth. Uh, oh, I choke on my food far too often. <laughs> <laughs> Me too. <laughs> He's gonna tail swipe. You are adults. <laughs> with a twenty-six to hit. Twenty-six to hit. Who? Sorry. Winter. Winter. Oh yeah. Oh, that definitely. Is Yes. The the AC is good. The AC is not 26 good. Oh. Okay. Uh Winter takes 17 slashing damage. <laughs> as you see the tail of this basilisk is equipped with a sharp proboscis that is also dripping with poison. I need a 
constitution saving throw from winter. He's okay. fine. Uh, that is a 16. Just passes. He takes half damage, so he takes 13 uh, poison damage. On top of the damage you already took? Yep. Oh, no. <laughs> big snake. There's a big when snake. When he hits. When he hits. That being said, he is doing quite poorly. I feel like he's, he's like... Screw the snake. Yeah, he's... Like him. Looking at the snake, kind of going... Well, all right then. No, no more theatrics. Got it. <laughs> oh boy! Time to get serious. Time to get serious. <laughs> Winters. Yeah. Well, those are those are serious words coming from Winter. <laughs> so Winter is probably gonna kill it with a smite next round. Um, Beza <laughs> will. Oh, keep sorry. Keeping... That's okay. Uh, Beza will keep keeping Gilly from being swallowed. Thank you, Beza. <laughs> and show vortex for you. Stop trying to eat my friends! <laughs> I'm so tasty. <laughs> yeah, you are no longer in the snake's mouth. She'll put you right beside it. There. And that is Faze's turn. I don't think she has any bonus actions. No, because she cast a spell. Um, cool. <laughs> After Faza is... Why don't you get your legendary stuff back? Uh, Basilisk is grumpy that Faza keeps taking away his tasty, tasty dinner. He is going to spit poison at her. No! Change weapon attack. Just plus nine want to seafood. Okay. Right? Is Play that ahead. so wrong? Is that so much to ask? Just a little seafood every now and then? 23, to, 23 to hit Faza would hit even if she shields, so there's no point. Faza takes oh, 22 poison damage. And Yeesh. Creature is in. Oh, and it splashes. Uh, who's nearby? How far away are you? You are in um, a rev. I need a constitution fit saving throw as some of the poison splashes off of Faza onto you. Good lord. Um... Nobody's fucking a, around a anymore. Rev, a Rev's constitution saving throw is a 15. 15 just passes. That is exactly what you needed to get. Uh, is it's much higher. So you both take half damage. Half of 16 is 8 poison damage. Oosh. Snake wants to eat. Faza keeps taking his food. He is not happy. He wants some sushi. Um, that Run, is Otto. Winter's turn. Run. We're here for Unagi. <laughs> That's eel. That is. What's octopus? I don't know. I've had it. I feel like Otto's just like got all his little tinties just like wrapped around the neck of the snake and is just sort of like riding it. <laughs> That's so cute. You just like hear like pack. <laughs> Winter. Yeah, that's, that's An better. angry backpack. James? Oh, sorry. I, it's it's okay. It's winter. It's a winter's turn? Yeah. Yep, he goes after Faisa. He's last. He rolled a nine. But, but this would be winter's second turn, right? No. Yeah, this would be winter's second turn. Yeah. yeah. But a, a rev didn't have a second turn. Did I skip a rev and went straight to the snake? I did. I'm sorry. Daniel! I'm Rude. sorry, Arev. It's your turn now. <laughs> that's okay. Uh, that's that's why I was confused. That's why you were like, Winter. That's and I was like, kind of like spacing off because I was like, what? Winter? That doesn't make sense. Um, I apologize. But that's okay. You know what? Uh, my turn is going to be uh, relatively quick because um, 
being emboldened by uh, Winter, you know, staring straight at the basilisk and ink being all over the basilisk's face and all that sort of stuff, um, Arev would have then focused his aim and brought those brilliant uh, starlight eyes uh, directly at the basilisk. <laughs> and um, the the constellation, there's the, the tattooed constellation right along his eye of this fletched arrow that is um, knocked just below his, his eyes. Um, while holding the, the actual bow in one hand, Amelia's bow in one hand, he reaches up with his uh, right hand and he touches the constellation of the arrow and he pulls a single mote of starlight out of the constellation and he holds it up in his hand. And he quickly tosses it up into the air as it vanishes into midair above his hand. And then he pulls, pulls his hand down to the bow and he just looks at it, at the basilisk. And he whispers, shooting stars rarely miss, as he uses his shooting star cantrip and pulls this glittering mode of starlight across in a beautiful... Um, like ra rainbow esque, pristine uh, light arrow, and rockets this arrow out uh, at the basilisk. Uh, rolling okay. a twenty eight to hit. Twenty eight absolutely hits the basilisk that you are, as you just said, staring directly at. And uh, on its trails, uh, rather uh, as this arrow. Uh, heads out. Um, Arev's hand follows it in the air, and as he does so, he just makes a rapid splitting motion with his hand, and the arrow mid trajectory splits into a second illusory arrow that follows around behind, trailing in an arc like a like a comet's spiral pattern right behind the first light, with his bonus action radiant shot. Uh, for a 30 to hit? 30 also does hit. Is it, I, I rolled a 19 plus 11. Oh, yeah. That's a good roll. So, um, 10, so 16 radiant damage plus and 2d8. So 16 plus Nine is twenty. So twenty-five radiant damage. Okay. And then, if I'm correct, it's my bonus action plus my damage as well. Mm -hmm. For your arrow, yeah. Uh, your arrow adds your wisdom modifier, I believe. Oh yeah. So it's so it's plus five. Uh, cool. So it's that's thirty-one points of radiant damage. Okay. Motherfucker. That's in addition to the earlier twenty-five. Um, combined. Already. Oh my god! No, so no, it was it was uh, it was twenty six. Okay. Uh, radiant damage plus five, so it was thir it was thirty one, gotcha. thirty one total between the two arrows. Gotcha. Amazing. Okay. Um, I need before we conclude that because this is supposed to happen at the start of your turn. I need you to make me a Constitution saving throw as you stare directly into the eye of this basilisk. Even though its face was covered by ink, it's not. It mm, moved. Not anymore. The ink stays. Oh, it moved. The ink's like oh. floating in in place. That's why it moved. It's okay, just a little that's cloud totally of fine. Black somewhere. Um, I will happily and confidently say I rolled a five. Oh no! Total? Oh no! Five total. Okay. I rolled um, a three plus two. I don't. Damascus doesn't have a reaction left. He used it to make an opportunity attack. Okay. Um, you are instantly petrified. Shoot. So here is what happens. You line up the shot. You stare directly into its eye. And you feel your legs start to turn to stone as you, with your last available bit of movement, release the arrow. Second one comes flying out. It pierces directly into the eye of the basilisk. 
hovering there for a second. The second one comes right behind, does the Robin Hood thing and hits the back of the arrow and pushes it right into the thing's brain. You killed it. And you feel that joy overwhelm you. And then you feel what your cousin, sister, must have felt as you start to turn to stone. Combat's over, and I'm going to hand the cleanup of this mess over to our actual GM. <laughs> uh, as whoa, whoa, whoa. you turn to stone, Arev, uh, the last thing you hear as this as it, the petrification kind of climbs up your body is from Roy with a Arev! As he loses not only his sister, but his brother to the oh, snake. No. You all are out of combat. Arev. I mean, he saved your asses. But now you have a statue. Arev. God damn it. What did you. I. Do we hear something about this? Uh, That came out half my other character. You do. You do. Yeah, I do. I start going through my my bag. I have anti petrification juice. Which probably had a different name, but that's what it says in my inventory, so that's what I'm calling it. Well, they sound yes. uh, very good. Yes, helpful. you do have. You do have. I have one vial of anti-petrification juice. I which run over... is just basilisk saliva, everyone. Um, it it will petrify you and then unpetrify you as it go, you go down its throat. So that you're oh, alive that in its stomach. Well, then in that this case, makes we have tons sense. of it. <laughs> we have a whole snake full of it. You have a whole snake refill full of it. after But we you use have it. enough that you can Yeah. I not even thinking about that. I'll run over to a rev and I will just like pop the cork and try and figure out how to get him to drink it and then stop and be like sprinkle and sprinkle it on him. <laughs> rub it. <laughs> rub it into his face. All right. Rub this, it in, baby. This work. Rub it in. Oh, God. Work. It sort of burns Red. as you're rubbing it in. Um Ow. It's a little acidic. You're definitely uh, taken off the top layer of your hands, but uh, as you do, you begin to see Arev's hair come back. And it, you know, begin to, the stone begins to fall away from him. Uh, Winter comes up and kind of, and he'll take your hands, Damascus, and put, lay his hands over them. You're like in the hot, you're in the hot seat, oh, like, you know, like, uh, uh, let's play like hot potato. Okay. And, uh, and he, is he, is he ghosting he me? Them. He is not ghosting you. Oh, no, you're okay. hand to thought... hand. You're like, you know, like when we play that game and I like go, bam, yes. ow, ow, yes, ow, fuck is. me. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. I thought you meant he was behind me and he was like. No, no. Top. But if he like <laughs> comes up behind you and puts his arms around you and then just takes his head. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no. Um, I rev you fall out of it and as you're kind of as you're as it, the stones begin to fall away uh roy comes up and starts pulling off chunks of it so you come out just you come out faster um yeah. you are you're mute. you are mute I, I see freeze my left arm i uh like was very immediately like cl- clasp onto his arm or like holding myself steady <laughs> He's, he is you berating are. you the entire time. <laughs> That's so stupid. He's not supposed to look at the basilisk. But you, you don't. It doesn't. Do none of you have fireball? Just like. I mean, no. I punched it with other people's hands. That seemed like a real good idea, at the very least. Yes. Uh, Rev, just stop trying to move your feet. Ain't quite out yet. You're just gonna fall over and crack your head. Got it. Uh, winter helps like remove your feet just like you hear like crack crack as he's brute forcing it away um you okay we okay we're good we're alive i mean yeah i mean we're all in one piece right yeah we are yeah I, i know i scared you all there for a second um yeah, you were just in one big 
immobile piece. You were a statue. You were a statue. That but it's dead. Me rem- what was that? It's dead. Done. It's dead. Um, hearing that reminder that he was in one big piece of the statue, I tell my hands to all go back to the piles that they were in near the They bodies. just fall. You just see <laughs> yeah. them like drop from <laughs> just immediately. Dun, 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 dun. Yeah, you're, you're all in one piece. <clears throat> That's... Yeah. We can't like... Phyllis, well, she they were in multiple pieces. Um, we can't like do that to any of these statues, can we? Has it been too long? Yeah, I mean, I mean, they're in pieces. So yeah, I I don't know if I want to. I don't yeah, know you'd have them. to discuss what kind of quality of life they might actually have. Or how long? Um, it depends on which bits they're missing. Do you know if any of them (laughs) turned to Roy? Do you recognize any of them Uh, by any chance? You know if any of them signed DNRs? (laughs) I'm. He's still holding Phalus's face (laughs) in his hands. I. Yeah, and that's what you get. Like he just doesn't. (laughs) There's no humor there for him. Um, I, I I go up beside him, and I lay the back of my hand on Faeus's cheek, and reach up behind, and just like clasp sort of the back of Roy's head, and like that 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 thing where you like rest your arms sort of on the back, and you like grasp in like the lower reaches of the hair, you know, and mm-hmm. I hold his head, and I go. You see him kind Roy. of pull away from it just a little bit. <laughs> Roy. What? She. They would want you to still be here. And not just staring at their lifeless face. And I think you know that as much as I do. I never got to make things right between us. Well, um, so that's kind of a funny story. Um, You never had to, Roy. Do you remember all the times you came and found me and by the bay. We. Oui. All, all those, all those times that you thought they were mad at you, that they, that that relationship was unsalvageable. Haven't you ever had a moment where you were afraid to tell somebody how you were really feeling? Every the time. look he's giving you is just like, yeah. Every time that Faeus would find me at that lake, if they got talking about you, all that they could say was how much they looked up to their brother and how much they wished they could find it in them to tell you that they were sorry for acting up so much that they wanted to know that they would always have your back and that they believed in you. you know, but just I kind of think that you are they... full of shit considering a, for the past, uh, you know, year or so, I have been running all of their kind out of the country. You didn't run her. You didn't run them out of the country. Because they were stubborn. I tried. Uh, That's what I'm trying to get across, Roy, is maybe maybe you're bitter about your role in things, but I was there when we were having these conversations. I know how they felt about you, and 
You didn't have to make anything right. We should go. Come. Then let's go. Besides, there's someone who's still alive who does need saving. Just shakes you off. Give me a second, you two. Um, Damascus is going to go over to the snake. Mm -hmm. Pull out a sword. and I really don't want... Hey, Gilly, you think you can pull this thing's eye out? Damascus doesn't want to get his hands dirty. Hi. (laughs) Maybe you can use a tentacle. (laughs) Wait, what? Remember that... I've cleaned a bunch of fish in my day. This is nothing... Beautiful. I toss my dagger to her. Uh, how do you, what are you doing like to Greek. do this? Uh, how big is it? How big is a basket? Like a like a soccer ball situation? <laughs> I kind of feel ball. like it. Yeah, maybe like yeah, a soccer ball. Like, a, like or you not want a soccer some... ball, like a volleyball. Like so, they're a little bit smaller. Okay, Ooh. I feel like you want some dexterity so as to not like pop anything. I think she's going in hands. Just, she just, just open its eyelids up. Yeah, just okay, reach in you, there. Yeah, constitution just saving throw. Out. Oh, come on. <laughs> uh, Barda. <Great. laughs> Thank you. Uh, 14 plus 6, uh, 20 plus. You're good. Oh, uh, seven. You yeah. close your eyes and begin to pull it out. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Don't look, don't look. With a sick, like, with a really sickening, like, <laughs> you, you, it just comes through. It'll, it'll pop, it comes out. Ah, it's nasty. <laughs> that would be why I was hoping I didn't have to do it myself. <laughs> All right, let's, uh, we've got, like, container to put it. I really don't want to put it in my bag of holding. Well, um, <laughs> you have, um, like, a on. grocery it, bag to put it in first? It <laughs> takes off her her, her uh what are they called her cloak and just starts wrapping it up ew 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 ew, ew. she Wait, starts using her mage hand so that she doesn't have to touch it okay that's a little better cloak. that's a little mm. better uh and then she gives it to you damascus i don't want it in my bag uh, all right i put it in my sack of preservation ew Ooh. the apples i don't even like them that <laughs> much but like <laughs> Ew. Things uh, probably don't touch in there. It's probably it's like, like a, a dimensional dimension situation. Why don't yeah. you go in there and tell me what it's like, and then we'll know. <laughs> Do you I... know for sure? No, I can't remember that. Can I go in there? <laughs> <laughs> you can stick your head in, I guess. <laughs> don't give Gilly ideas. <laughs> <laughs> uh, we... Uh, all right, what... We need this thing for that potion we're trying to make. Uh, Remember it said something about a serpent's eye that can turn things to stone? I'm glad Ah, we just haven't started ripping people's bodies apart. I thought you were just getting nasty with it. So you just decided to help? Like a trophy. Ah, I'm supportive! (laughs) (laughs) I mean, they're supportive and then they're delusional. People should hobbies! If you want a trophy, just grab one of the fangs. That sounds dangerous as well, actually. I mean, <laughs> they were no, very poisonous. Actually, the eye would make sense for a trophy for Damascus. He really does like like being perceived. Aha. Uh-huh. Aha. Uh-huh. But um, Cha, he finds out he's a dad for a day and makes her come <laughs> out. <laughs> Uh, his true form is revealed <laughs> uh, I, I'm confused did I say something funny? no uh, it's okay. that, that's what made it so funny oh, oh. So, I, I, I guess we just don't see eye to eye uh, <laughs> oh no he's reached I, his true form guys I make as if I'm going to reach into the bag and just go we can fix that <laughs> I wonder if this thing can still turn people to stone. <laughs> oh no. Is this a Medusa's head situation? Do I have an eye that can turn things to stone? Um, <laughs> for now. Okay. Mm. But you will have to, like, whoever looks at you doing that, 
not great. Hey, it could be useful in limited situations. Ooh, we should load up, by the way, we should load up on uh, Basilisk Juice. saliva. That's just a good call. in case. You guys, you guys like start just scraping the tongue and stuff, letting it, letting it, you just let it like drool. Sure. Yeah. It's a little yeah. forks tongue is just like hanging down, and then we just like put a little something underneath both of the little forks. How many anti petrification right. juices can we get? Rips. <laughs> uh, roll me a d6. Uh, Gilly, it was your idea. Go for it. Okay. Two. 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 You get two. Awesome. Before, <laughs> before Roy's like, no, take your time, please. Oh, right. oh yeah, sorry, we're like here for we something. Have not, we have nowhere <laughs> else to be. Save your, your head. All right. So, uh, I'll add one. And, uh, whatever. Uh, you, you can divvy them up afterwards. Yeah, okay. I'll just, but I have two for now. You've walked up to your to this tree. You watch as Roy walks up to the tree and you realize that as he goes around the side that there are stairs wooden stairs that go up the tree and begin to coil around going upwards uh what's your are you guys all following him sure uh, i will fly i'm right beside him you run up beside him you're fall you're you fall in kind of behind them flying upwards uh the tree shakes and shivers as you guys begin to climb the spiral staircase that disappears above you. Um, what's your marching order, guys? I'll bring For those that order. are not flying. You're right You're right beside him. You're behind them? Gray and a rev. I'll be behind them. Okay. Uh, Fades up behind, I'll him, say, behind her. Yeah, yeah, and then Winter uh, going up the rear. Maybe when <clears throat> maybe phase ahead of me, winter behind me. Winter Actually, can, phase, can phase fit on my cat? Oh, here. I'm gonna say that's a bit much. Okay. Fair Especially enough. for a Tressum just being like, nah. Okay. Just asking. Um you can work on it. Maybe he'll build up to it. Passengers. Yeah, this is your first flight. I'm gonna say that you're gonna have to uh work up to having passengers at the very least. Yeah. I was gonna say get him get him a saddle, but or get her a saddle, but she's not gonna wear a saddle. If you try and put clothes on a cat, it's not gonna work. <laughs> we can, you you can work on like procuring like a magic one that like appears. Uh, it smells like catnip. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's it. That's the end of the That'd game. Be a distraction <laughs> though. <laughs> um, you climb as you climb. Eventually, you come to a small wooden platform. Um, do you guys continue through? I mean, I, I'm watching. You just Roy. you take quick like look around. <laughs> he stops for like the briefest second, kind of looks around quickly, and then continues up. Uh, I'm gonna make a roll for something, no, totally not related to anything. Um, I mean, you I'd, continue I'd, if he's look if he's looking around. I'd I'd love to like dedicate the look around myself. Like he he's looking for something. Maybe like something will stand out to me as odd. Uh, give me a perception check. Because like, like I'm a knight of Rhea, right? Like I, yeah. Give me a perception check. <laughs> You've never been um, here before, but twenty-two. With a twenty-two, I mean, you you take that second to look around, and in the briefest moments, you hear someone talking. And that's mm. probably what Roy heard for a second there, um, and you realize that it's coming from above you. It's just kind of been fl coming, echoing down. Roy, are we? Are we walking into a trap? I'm. Yes, I am bringing you to a trap. No, we are going to save my wife. Two things, can which be true. may involve fighting. I'm not sure who's there. 
All right, let's go. I've got your back. And uh, you guys continue up the stairs. Um, does anyone want to make an insight check on that? Or you I just would gonna... love to. You would love to? Go In ahead. fact, do that, actually. 11 plus... Thirteen. Thirteen. Yeah. Nineteen. No, okay. With thirteen, I mean, he seems like he's being honest. With a nineteen, he's not lying to you. He's more worried about his wife than he is about bringing you into a trap. Um. So it might be a trap, but he doesn't care. And he doesn't Basically. know about it if it is. Yeah. Yeah. He didn't. Might be. It. But he didn't set it. He's walking into it. Um, and he's he's with us, yeah. Yeah. Uh, the tree shakes again. And kind of almost vibrates. Uh, he's getting angry. I don't think that we can catch y'all if any of you fall off. Just be careful. Yeah, is this like a thing that trees can do around here? Is like, can they move and stuff? I guess we met those too. Is this an alive tree? Is that the tree talking? I'm not sure what is happening right now, but no, this is not exactly normal. Okay. You guys reach another platform. Um, I so when a rev's in charge, can he and Varian communicate? Uh, you have just you know that you've just been able to like. It's slowly, oh, it's been opening up. So you've been able to like hear him on occasion and vice versa. Yeah. Is, is there a way to like insight myself to see if the tree shook like this in the moments before Varian's death? Uh, I think I'm pretty sure that you've seen his last moments, right? Yes, but I don't remember the tree shaking as part of the description. So roll, roll, um, roll history, uh, with advantage history? because it's his his thing <laughs> and you were there for it, like you you saw it. Cool. Thank you. Yikes! So with advantage, that is a solid fourteen. Uh, it, that's not bad. Um, he doesn't oh. remember the tree shaking. But he was very concerned with his own dying. Yes, that's valid. Yeah, so it's it's not a no, but it's definitely something to watch out. So, um, I I just call back to the group and I say, "Look, I don't know what's ahead, but uh, just make sure you're on your guard." You guys also, also continue allergies. past. You continue Everybody past have this. Ball. I do. Did you pass? Sorry. This second uh, platform, just taking one stair after another, as fast as you can. Um, everyone, give me a perception check. Eleven. Eleven. Okay, you're you're busy running after Roy. You're not really paying attention. Uh, anyone 17. else? Seventeen. Seventeen. Twenty nine. Twenty nine. Because you're Roll not actually running up the stairs with them, and you're flying beside them. You see it coming before um, anyone else does, and there's a red sort of energy pulsing downwards. Uh, like it's almost like. It takes over the entire sky. It's like a, a almost like a, a what do you, my words are just done right now. Like a Aurora. Wow, An you're gonna go through version? it like a portal. You're gonna like go a... through it. There's no way. There's like the whole the whole sky is covered and it is coming down. It's like a platform almost. Oh, great! And it is coming towards you. Do you do anything? Do you warn them? It's just yeah. A uh, giant red wave of magical energy is coming down here. Does anyone know what the fuck that is? Ah, uh, 
I have no clue. Shit. Um, We're about to find out a bit. Can I try casting Dispel Magic at, like, a whole side? Like, at an area of it to maybe let them be able to run through it? Yeah. I do 100%. That. Cast it. I cast it. Um, You're going to roll for me. Okay. It's an ability check, so DC is 10 plus spell level. The DC ability. that you need for this is 21. Okay. Okay. Just so, for the to make a patch in this. Okay. I roll I add this plus half of my proficiency. So I roll seven. Can I like expend a spell slot because I uh, recognize you did, his you spell did to not give me catch advantage? this. I'm gonna say you did oh, not right. catch this, so he's he's gonna do this by himself. That's fair. Sixteen on the dice plus seven is twenty-three. Ooh. Okay. So it's coming down towards you guys. You cast Dispel Magic, and for that briefest of seconds, there's almost like a hole that opens up above you guys, and you run through. And then it it solidifies again underneath you. Oh, shit, that's down. strong magic. I don't know what that thing was, but it's barely able to do anything to hold it back. You feel up to doing that again, Damascus, if it comes back, or... If we had to, I can try a few more times at least. All right, well, uh, everything is tinted red now. Oh, like we're inside it? Yeah, like you're in the bubble. That seems good. Um, can I do my can I do my magic awareness thing? Mm -hmm. Um, and then I can at least maybe figure out what kind of magic it is. I learned the location of any spell or magic item and what school of magic it belongs to. Within 60 feet. This is the most toxic type of magic you have ever felt. It feels like decay and dying and death. It's so, there's necromancy going on so strongly. Um, And then I'm going to say there's like hints of, hang on, uh... I'm just checking what that is. There are hints of... What is this spell? What is this spell? Uh, conjuration as well. Okay. Guys, this um, is necro necromancy and conjuration. Uh, But Ooh. like, badass necromancy. Which seems like not a great sign. <laughs> And summoning something undead. <coughs> you can tell how far it is? It's um, within yeah, 60 like feet the at the very least. Uh, directly within... above you, okay. about 60 feet up. Like you guys are you guys are booking it around this tree. We headed right toward it, so I guess we... we'll find out what it is. We should hurry. Alright. We hurry. You run. Okay, you run. You double the effort. Um, so, you take a few more platforms, and as you reach the top of this tree, you're, you kind of crest this wooden platform. Um, it's adorned with, like, a bunch of arcane sigils all over uh, the wood that you're stepping on. The trees are painted in them and carved with them. Um there are strange runes and glyphs etched into the wood. Uh, with like a quick cursory glance around, you notice that there are two similar platforms behind this one. Um, they're all connected by like wood wooden branches or branches br by branches and bridges. We're going there today. Uh, the air is like thick with this scent of incense. Um, the sounds of chanting and crackling of magic can be heard. Uh, and on one of these platforms is a slim, a tall, slim figure draped in dark robes, standing at the center of one of the platforms with an altar before them. Uh, lifting her head, you see that it is Esme, Roy's mother. Um, gotcha. There is a portal opening above her head. Her arms outstretched towards it. 
on the altar is a sword forged from a very rare but familiar black crystal that you guys have definitely seen before. It's glowing with an ominous red light. Would you like to? I see your face. Do you want to do an inside, like a, a investigation from here? Yeah, <laughs> absolutely. Would I know about whatever the crystal is? Because I feel like I don't. You do not. No. Okay. You do not. Uh, the best. Uh, Arrive. Do it with advantage. Yeah. Arrive. What the hell um, has happened? I say as I give him bardic inspiration. Same small I- crap. If if I'm clutching my telescope, can I also cast guidance? Yeah. Okay. So And you have you have Bardic. Perfect. D ten. So advantage. This all helps because I have, have a plus zero to investigation. So So guidance is plus two. Bardic is what size die? D eight. Oh, oh, sorry, D10. Awesome. My bad. D- oh, even better. Okay. Uh, sorry, I was very excited. <laughs> okay, well, it's the worst roll off that, but that's fine. So 14 plus 2 plus 1 is 17. Oh, I can give you another D3 17. if you want it. Do you want that? D3, butt pat, go. Sure. Uh... <laughs> Healy runs up behind you and smacks your butt. You got this. The last little bit you need. Uh, That's three. So That's actually really uh, good. Dirty dirty sweaty. You know this crystal. I mean, you drink it sometimes when you want to see your boys. Um, It is made out of the same thing that Gwen turned into. That same... Oh, no. That same energy... That you feel every time you pop over to see the cunning. Cool. Cool and good. Awesome. <laughs> yes. Hi. Uh, <laughs> sorry. This, this is my this is my little may, may I ask you something? <laughs> Can I, I, I DM? I, <laughs> teacher. Uh, <laughs> um I so when I was turning to stone, um I, I kind of wanted to have like 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 a, a last moment sort of thing, mm-hmm. but I never got a chance to have that because it was sort of it was uh, it was narrated like I fired the shot at the turn to stone. Um, it, I don't understand if it's not. Okay. I would have wanted if I had this moment of like realization, like okay, I did it, but like now I'm done. If I had like three seconds, you know. Uh huh. All I would have done is reached my hand into my pocket and found a coin, a, a wooden coin that was given uh, to me by Callum. Ooh. Uh-huh. Uh, as as like a memento, but also like a as a token. Uh, he said whenever I touched it, he would know uh, that we were in danger. I wouldn't know necessarily where we were or whatever, but that like that he would know that we were in danger. Oh and... no no! He told you if you snap that. He told you if you snap that, um, he'll know exactly where you are. It's a one-time use. He can get to you whenever you need him. Uh, so, um, I I think I would have like went and rested my hand on it, but I don't mm-hmm. think I would have snapped it. I would have just like pressed on it, and then like been turned to stone. Yeah. So you almost almost snapped it. Yeah. Very close, but he doesn't know until you use it. Okay. So and then I I like think one of those then let's where you like press on one and the other one feels it. Exactly. Oh, I've fallen and I can't get up. Right. <laughs> so then I I think I, I think that if that's the case, I, thank you for letting me recon rec- on that moment in because then it mm-hmm. makes more sense now with him already having done that. That like being in this tense moment and seeing uh like that stone and sort of coming face to face with wait this is reality and like that was not reality that was just in my dreams and now it's Mm -hmm. in front of me 
there's this moment where he's like help and so like he reaches in and he crushes the coin okay you you snap that coin yeah. um you feel it almost like heat up as you do that so you know that the message was sent okay um as may still chanting in a language that most of you don't know. And I'm going to say you probably aren't aware of what it is, but you've heard it before, Arev. Again, from Vistrixen's own mouth. Um, she looks up and calls out to this portal and almost gestures to whatever is on the other side of it. Um, the chanting begins to grow louder, more intense. And a form begins to take shape on the portal on the other side. Tendrils of darkness kind of passing through the veil. Um, in front of you guys, on the other pedestal, next to, next to um, Esme, who is chanting, is a purple tiefling. She's incredibly frail, very skinny, like she hasn't been fed properly in years. Her hair is long and matted. She's got chubby cheeks and just these vibrant, glowing red eyes. And she's not looking at you guys. She's staring at Roy. And Roy is almost frozen. Because this is the first time he has been able to see his wife in almost five years. And you hear her go, I thought you had abandoned me. And Roy immediately, never, I would never that going on he can't get past what looks like two figures standing on directly in front of your on your pedestal that you have met before a lady with very long white hair um and a man a very grumpy male what you assume is human both wearing um, armor that have a raven's head on it. These are the kids. Hmm. I mean, as the ones yes. that we met in the the Tamina's realm. Tamina's. Yes, yeah. you uh, you gave them such a nice gift, Damascus, so that they could open up portals between Dem Tamina's realm and this one. And you look at them, they look at you. The uh the Herald of Darkness kind of scoffs. And the Herald of Void just soft smile as she looks at you. It's so nice to see you again. Thought I would return your gift. As she tosses a flute onto the ground. The shadow. As I roll back here. Hang on a second. These tendrils of darkness pass through the veil. And a towering and menacing figure begins to emerge from the portal. Um... Esme, ignoring your presence, ignoring its presence, just begins to chant, pouring like all of her energy into this, from this portal into that sword. And that's what you see when this, when you look at this, this portal is funneling this sword directly, um, funneling into the sword directly. A red glow intensifies. The air around the sword begins to like ripple and distort. Um, can everyone give me a perception check as all of this is kind of going on? Sixteen. 
16. 16. Okay. Anyone else? 22. 22. With a 16, I mean, you hear it. You hear it long before you even see them. But you hear be- below you a frenzied and relentless cacophony of just like scraping and scratching. Like it's accompanied by these guttural snarls and hisses that are um, intensifying and getting louder as they approach you. Um, with a 22, uh, you realize that these void and darkness people in front of you, they're not really there they're almost kind of there as like a hologram as like a as as a a spirit not that you guys have much experience um does anyone check to see what is coming towards you it is coming up from the from below you i very much would check to see what is coming towards us you peer over the platform and you begin to see these just dozens of frantic bony limbs grasping and clawing at any available foot foothold with like a desperate urgency you hear the occasional groans and screech of a horde of terraciel purple tieflings their eyes are glazed over they are straining to pull themselves upwards you hear some of them coming up the stairs behind you um and as they get closer the sound of their quickened breathing and like relentless clawing at things and clawing over each other is just deafening it's like a roar coming up towards you yes i i turned to damascus and I look at him and I go, I'm not normally the stupid one, right? No. <laughs> what? Forgive me. I kick off with my heels and bolt backwards, lunging for the altar. And I'm going to try and slam my hand down and grab the sword. Oh, so boy. the altar is a cross from you on a different platform. You're going to have to get there. It's about 30 feet to that platform. I bonus action starry form dragon, spread my wings and fly. You Ooh. spread your wings and fly. Baller. Okay. So you are dashing across through through the void and the the uh, darkness herald. Um, you like, uh, head to... Because hmm? like, they're incorporeal or whatever, right? So I, I'm hoping I just get through them. Yeah. You do. And- you definitely get through them. Um, as you go across, you notice that. Um, do you remember a <sighs> shook? It's one of the purple tieflings that you cornered to talk to about stuff. You see his face in that crowd of oh, no. of just rabid zombies. Um, Shaylith, who is uh, who is Roy's wife looks at you and she makes eye contact with you and she looks strong and proud in that moment and she looks like yes this is about this bitch is about to get fucked up like this is the moment (laughs) uh and she just throws herself flat so that you don't hit her on the ground uh between and i this is my fault because i fully did not um I fully skipped over this between you and Esme just there's like one extra person on the the thing is um who you would recognize as Phalus's mother uh mm-hmm. her her birth mother so another purple tiefling eyes clouded as well like she's Cloud. being controlled okay um From below you, as you reach for this sword, you transform back, or you just stay in starry form. No, I, I'd, I'd be staying starry form. Like, I, in my head, like I charged to the edge of the platform, basically, like jumped into the sky, then like mm-hmm. erupted, kind of into my star, like with my wings, and then like flew further to the other platform. And in my head, 
I literally like flung my wings back and just propelled myself forward to like bit crash land almost if you will just like full on grab this sword and like tuck and roll okay so you go to grab this sword as you uh as you cross that gap you hear from below you Arrows! and you know that that's Callum he's come to find you um you reach for that sword and as you do as you begin to grab it everyone the floor beneath you begins to change and it becomes like this almost inky liquid and the sky and this portal above you drops down over you a rev and you guys feel the air grow thick this like arcred stench of sulfur and ash fill your nose um the sky overhead of you becomes this sickly shade of red and you find yourself frozen and unable to move as this ooze of like crawls up your legs and crawls down from around this portal and just begins to like overtake you like a venom like that nice symbiotic suit that just kind of swells up and all over you um darkness consumes you and a searing heat washes over you as you like you've just stepped into a furnace um it hurts too it's burning you feel like it's beginning to hurt to the point where you don't think that you can take it um and then it stops all out of all suddenly like nothing had touched you at all and you feel yourself fall you are a hundred feet up in the air and you are plummeting to the ground um Arev, you can definitely Arev and and, uh, and Damascus, you guys can catch yourselves as you have wings. Mm-hmm. The rest of the party begins to plummet towards the ground. Can we see each other? You can see each other. Okay. Is there anything that you're doing? Mm. Yelling. Let's see. Could I attach myself with a tentacle? Probably not. Below you, you see rivers of molten lava. Of jagged mountains stretching as far as the eye can see. The air is thick with smoke. The heat is suffocating. The platform that you were on is gone. And you are not in Iowan anymore. Great. (laughs) Um... What are you hey, doing? Hey, uh, to the ground. Do you want to maybe like do one of those dimension thingies <laughs> or something? <laughs> just all the way. She's just, just like <laughs> horror. <laughs> and she okay. grabs a coin from her pocket and snaps um, it as she casts feather fall on you all. I, okay, I was gonna. Yeah. She's a feather fall coin. Excellent. Okay. That, yeah. Great. That was, that's, that's good. good. Thank you. Well, because well, I was going to... Uh, theoretically, I could have used my meta magic and twin spelled polymorph and turned both Car- uh, Gilly and Faisa into, like, giant eagles or whatever, right? Ooh. Yeah, you could have, but it's 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 been uh, taken care of. Okay, because... But... Yeah, I was reading too slowly. Yes. Go ahead. You said we're above a river of lava yeah that's not gonna be a problem you see rivers of lava okay you see mountains with dragons right above it yeah no you guys are just this is what you're taking in as you fall and or fly down um you can hear carried on this like carried on the wind almost you hear like a distant roar of what sounds like many voices 
a cacophony of screams, wails of souls trapped in an abyss. It's uh, you're in a place of darkness, of terror. You're in a re- you're in a realm that only the most cunning can survive in. Um, the most cunning. The most cunning. I see what you did there. Mm-hmm. And uh, right here, I think it's where we'll take a five minute break. Cool, cool. Okay. I think as you guys you <laughs> know, plummet to the ground and yeah. Uh, we're plummeting slowly now, yeah, to be fair. Slowly. You're, you know, uh Faze is still screaming the whole way down. <laughs> <laughs> Hope nothing's around to hear. I, I, I feel like if, if she is falling slowly, um, because I emit light, I would have like flown to be like near Faza just to be this like warmth, this beacon, this familiarity. Hurting. So hey, she might know. she might still be <laughs> might still be screaming, but it's like hopefully like more like holy shit I'm falling, not holy shit I'm falling to my death. It's it's holy shit, where the fuck are we? What's happening? Yeah. And we'll this be back bad. in five. <laughs> Just um, fixing some stuff right now, getting us in stream, in screen, in stream. I cannot take time off from DMing because when I come <laughs> back, I can't do anything. Do you just not talk I mean, unless you're DMing? Is that the problem? <laughs> you just never speak. or playing. <laughs> I save Daniel. Okay, when Dan goes to work, if I'm awake, like I save it up until he gets home. I don't say anything. I'm just quiet. And then he gets home and I'm mm-hmm. like, Daniel. Oh, it's just so much and then the cat did this and then <laughs> and then the feeling separate, when you haven't talked so all day and you like talk for the first time and you're like oh wow that's rusty yeah <laughs> yeah that's fair i have to and teach you I... some basic sign just to like get it out of your system yeah it's right. it's so bad like if someone calls during the day to talk to me to like you know you have this appointment whatever they think i'm asleep or like yeah. I I haven't woken up yet because I haven't used my voice oh, yet. Croaky. Yeah, I'm just like mm. right. I have had this problem. Sorry, yeah. I'm not laughing because you said you have this appointment. I'm laughing because I heard you say they called to say you have I'm a disappointment. Hello, Jess. You're a disappointment. <laughs> But not even your your I'm ass disappointment. Just fine. you you have disappointment. I have like, disappointment. You are I just have disappointment in life. I have disappointment <laughs> in Daniel. I have just disappointment general. I mean, that's, we uh, that's how. We... So motherfucker, anyways. go get your <laughs> drink, why. Daniel. Get up. Go get your drink. Uh, I'll be right back. Go. Gotta get it. Th- things have been equalized. <laughs> <laughs> he forgot. He was like, "I'm, I'm stressing over this the whole break." It's important. Hey, hey chat. We're, we're not, brewing, we're not actually playing for the next like five minutes. So, uh, ask me anything. I'll respond. Yeah. <laughs> AMA. <laughs> it's just us in chat. AMA though. For five minutes. <laughs> no, there's like there's like ten. You can ask each other viewers. anything. If anybody yeah. in chat yeah, wants to ask people. anything, I will answer it right now. <laughs> What's your favorite I mean, color? My favorite color? Purple. Mm-hmm. Purple. Me too. Me Yay. too. <laughs> yeah. And then uh, actually sec- sec- second favorite color is green. Um, actually same. Blue. Same. <laughs> th- third of it third of it counts is silver. Man, you've got uh, three uh, already ranked. That is impressive. That's a lot of favorite colors. <laughs> you know what you're about, and I like that. I could not choose for most of my life, so I just went with rainbow. Um, nice. <laughs> That's valid. It's completely valid. Rainbow's Fully fantastic. Valid. Ra- I, I think like, rainbow I has... very much like when rainbow things are in rainbow order. That's like a thing for yes. me. It's got to be in rainbow yeah. order. It's true. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. 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 Fair, fair, fair. Motherfuckers eating too. Look at this. I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm just. <laughs> I'm just shitting on you. I love you. Uh, hey, guys. I'm used to it. I know you are. That's so says so much about our relationship. Um uh we have we have someone back. 
Uh, I would say new, not new, not really. She's been here before. She's only been gone a few months. Uh, Pi is back. And I'm super excited about it to see how things have changed. It's going to be interesting. Excitement. Be interesting. I've been screaming this whole time. Excitement, drama. For reasons I know, I've been you getting, know. I can confirm. I've been getting messages. <laughs> <laughs> uh, okay. Pi. Me. Alewin. A while ago. Ended up. In a universe or in a dimension that really no one ever aims to go for. Or to go for. To go to. Jesus fuck. Um, I know, right? Uh, and when you got there, you knew exactly where you were. You knew exactly where you were. You knew exactly who to go to. And you've been working for him for some time. As he enters the sitting room, a little perturbed, purple skin, you know, purple horns, but that gold, beautiful gold makeup that he always wears, as well as those gold rim glasses. The cunning enters his study, his sitting room, and he looks at you and he goes, it's time to go. What? This is important. A good, a good go, or something silly, because I'm very tired. They're here. Immediately, she gets up. She doesn't like say anything and just zooms right past him. She knows where she's going, and she just goes. Good help and all that. And he takes your book, puts it back on the shelf. I wasn't reading. done with that. She says it, she hasn't even looked back. Like she knows that's what they as would you, have done. <laughs> yeah. And as as you say that, you just hear, you hear it just softly as you're leaving. Just And he takes the book back out, opens it back <laughs> to the page that he saw you were on and puts it back in the chair. Thank you. And she still has not turned around. She is yeah. going. You leave his estate. You immediately know where you're going. It's this set of mountain. It's a mountain range where there's like this valley inside right now. And all around it is our rivers of lava. And you're, you knew that that's what they were, that's where these, they were going to break through. But as to why you have no clue, it's a fair distance away. So you've been traveling for maybe a day or so, or so to get to where you need to go. And in that day, there is an item that you have that looks like a pine cone. Um, it is not the one that you think you gave that one away, but it looks like a little pine cone. It's just this piece of, it's like a little medallion. And it lights up with this silver glow. Okay. Do you do you answer it? <laughs> yeah, of course. <laughs> On as you answer it, a little picture takes form in your hands. It's this um it's this pale Aladrin elf. He's lanky, got but got some pretty decent lean muscle built on him. Um, long black hair and scars all across where his eyes are. Okay. Has this and he's got happened? the bluest eyes. Hmm? Has this happened before? Has it lit up like this before? Is this the first time she's seeing it do this? So this is the first time. First time. This is the first time that he is calling you. Okay. Hey. He looks at you. So, you remember our deal, right? 
I mean, I feel like you sort of left some bits out. You didn't tell me this, did this. Does that mean you know where I am all the time? Maybe. Hmm. Anything else you would like you? to share? Not particularly. Sort of need to stay on the down low. You, you understand. We did speak. Keep the coin. It works both ways. All right. Hmm. And yes, I remember our idea, of course. You don't have to worry. And yet I do. You shouldn't. Call She's me like if you need me. And if you find out anything interesting. Hmm. Perhaps. And she's going to like put it back in her hair. You're, no, <laughs> and then you're, it's back in your pocket. <laughs> and you Why carry on. All right. As <sighs> you guys reach the floor, everyone. The, the ground is uneven with a whole bunch of jagged stones it makes you almost it makes it almost like the train is difficult hard for you to get your footing on um you can hear soft screams off in the distance um there are the sounds of creatures that you are not sure what they are out in the rocks um the air is thick, smoky ash, and the sky is a an eerie red that seems to pulse with an otherworldly energy. You guys are al alone, essentially, in another dimension. Anyone have the slightest idea what the fuck just happened? We almost died. We almost we just died. Got it. Did we just get a hill? Do I is have a sword? Hill? You do not have a sword. Oh. That would have been a nice little just bonus. Just as your fingers seem to clutch it. You were here. Arif, is this your fault? This feels like your fault. Did you no, bring us to another dimension? Squarely probably my fault. So, um... What have we learned about touching strange, creepy finger swords? <laughs> Do it Was this faster? the plan? Was this the plan? I don't Roy think this was, was not absolutely the plan. not the plan. We didn't have a plan, uh, to be fair. No, we did have a plan. The plan was no, not our plan. No, not the, our the, plan. No, oh, her plan. We... No, Roy's plan. Roy's not here. No, Roy's not here. Why Roy isn't is Roy not here? here. What the fuck? I don't oh, know. Is... And was that Callum's voice that I heard coming from down there? Why isn't he here? Was that oh, Callum's, Callum's voice? not here. That was Callum's is he? voice. That was Callum's voice. We didn't miss somebody with Featherfall, did we? Uh, oh, Who did we no. miss? Did anybody what are you go talking? Sleep? Who who were we supposed to get other than us? <laughs> but... Well, I'm just wondering if Ray and Callum was actually here. I hope not. They do not seem to be with you. All right. Um, that is unknown. But I'm gonna wait. Do you, you look around? Uh, Rev, don't I... you have friends that are from here? Is that... Um, I would hesitate to call them friends. I mean, but you know people. I perhaps. Um, it's more than <laughs> we've got. Uh, this place is. Um, I don't. I don't know how to say this other than just to say it but this place is kind of outside of time so uh, i i don't know whether us being here is like where for them it is so like they may not have met you know future me which is to them which is past me now or like Maybe I'm like current me and they've already finished whatever business they have to do with me. And now I'm just a nuisance that's back on their doorstep. 
I, like I I don't know. So I mean why entirely... wibbly wobbly bullshit. It's Wait. entirely possible that the reason they're interested in you in the first place is that we're about to meet them. In which case, we maybe get on with that. I, okay, I just, 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 time, it doesn't exist here. So sometimes when you like talk to him, you're like, oh, he's been like, he's like, he told you like, it's been so long or like, it's been three seconds in our time. Yeah, that's why I have no idea. Are, when uh, or where we are for them. I'm more oh. worried about going back to nothing. Oh, Jesus. That's not a person here. Never mind. <laughs> go back. We might go back and it might be a hundred years into the future. I mean... Is this... Oh, God. If we try to do it by ourselves, perhaps. But, I mean, keep in mind, I... I drank... The ground finger ginger tea. Um, every time I hear it, it just sounds worse. It gets As... worse every time he says that he keeps drinking it. GFGT. Just keeps um, doing it. And had have had conversations with, you know, the cunning and with the the demon named Renanel. Um uh, they always return me to the right moment in time. So I, I think it's less about our timeline being distorted and more just about this realm being weird. <clears throat> I think perhaps because our souls or our essences or who we are, on, like we are visitors of this plane. We are not made of this plane, right? So Perhaps we have some sort of intrinsic um, value of time that cannot be um, so easily distorted. But that's just a guess. Uh, he was hoping. I have... Knowledgeable guess. We can certainly wait and try and find your friends and see if they can find a way back I also have a potentially terrible idea that might let one of us at least peek back. I don't know if we would let them stay, but I pull out my loot of light, which has the banishment spell. Ooh. You gonna banish yourself? Banishes I don't want to banish myself. It banishes people back to the plane they came from. Mm -hmm. That's what it's supposed to do. You don't know where he's gonna end up, but yeah. Whoever you banish, you don't know where they're going to end up. Just back. Try it on Faisa or Winter, yeah. I guess. Or I was going to try it on Winter <laughs> because Winter might end up in Bella's realm. Oh. And that might be somewhere where we'd be able to get some help, perhaps. Potentially. This is a good idea. That's, I, that's, I, I lay all this out for everyone. I'd be far more comfortable if you picked me. You want me to banish you it, I just feel like if we don't know what's going to happen that I'm the right target there is some like okay, time there. sensitive let's shit just here. let's just hold your horses here that seems like a very like uh I'm the martyr mentality <laughs> okay exactly. you do have like another person on board your body which is maybe something to be think about from like an ethical standpoint before you're gonna sacrifice yourself. Listen, I just rather it be me. If someone's gonna die, guys, I volunteer. I well, volunteer as tribute. Die. Um, no, nobody said anything about dying. I just said that if we stop we trying to sacrifice yourselves. I, I'm, I'm not. <laughs> Can we? We we're but, gonna need to have we're gonna need to have a talk. We're gonna need to have we're gonna need to have a little talk, a sit down about how we don't run into death death. You know, just fuck. Logical situation. We send you back to... I banish you, you go back to where you came from. That means you get back to... Uh, Zombies. That platform and... where we were about to get overrun by all manner of things. By yourself, then what? I wouldn't be by myself. Callum and Roy would be there. The three and maybe... And maybe if we're lucky, Bysis. And 
honestly, if you banish me and I end up there and I can fight to protect Callum, I would... <clears throat> banish me. Uh, as you are having this conversation, just uh, what's everyone's passive perceptions? Um, stressing me out. <laughs> 16. Perception? 20. 20. Uh, 15. Unless you're stealthing, um, Alewen, you do see a figure off in the distance. <laughs> They're coming, ah. man. Someone's coming. Is that a demon? Damascus, I don't care who is showing up. Banish me. <laughs> Send me back. What do you do? Probably decide before the demon gets here. Okay. <laughs> Either How way, are we? <laughs> you're you're in the distance, so you maybe like uh, I'd say like maybe 80, 90 feet away. Okay. I okay. say to him, I'll do it for a minute. Then you're coming back. You tell us what you see, what happens, and then if we need to, we can send you back for good. Oh, if you can recon do that, mission, that's... not a death sentence. That's much Deal? lower stakes. Um, yeah, I have to hold concentration for a minute for him to stay. Otherwise, he comes back. Has, has it been? It damn it! How how much time you don't know. has elapsed in this timeless <laughs> realm? Yeah, you yeah. don't know. No. No, 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 no. That's Just the question, here. isn't it? Because I'm you still in my no, no. But I'm in my dragon form, so I need to know because if I fall out oh, of my starlight, then form, that's you important. would have fallen out of your dragon form a while ago. Okay, all right. Here's the thing: you don't know, and neither does your dragon form. If time doesn't exist here, is that going to mess up your holding one minute? Oh, situation. <laughs> We're gonna that's find a out. Good point. I don't. Oh, uh, uh, make, gonna roll make a decision check. if you're doing this before your um, fourth party member shows up, or you know, the hell like, this is. <laughs> I, yeah, we'll try it. I'll do it for a minute. I try and banish a rev. Okay, you banish. This is one of those like, what would my character do moments where I'm not trying to derail the story or be a dick, but like literally, Callum's in trouble. You just said you can send me back. Fucking send me back how? so I can save him. I feel like this how? is going to tell us a lot of stuff, which is uh -huh. good. Yeah. How close yeah. were we getting as they're trying to decide this? Uh, you are rapidly approaching them. You can probably call out to them. They'd hear you. With okay, within sixty. You feet. guys. How are you approaching? Oh. Describe your character. <laughs> what are you doing? What is what? Sorry, what just happened? What did I miss? Yes, yeah, so she was within sixty feet. Yeah. I know what's what, but that's a range of. I, I also know uh, if that's a range of too. Um, I, am I said you're eighty, so, 80 so you've been shoulders. walking towards them. So yeah, yeah. So like they're they are. I'm not saying they're booking it, but she's she's tall. She's lanky, so she's got she's got a pretty quick stride, and she's definitely like on a mission so if they're within 60 feet and she notices one of you trying to cast a spell for kind of whatever reason she's kind of already assuming that like maybe not a good thing she doesn't know what's going on um so she'll call out to you guys and she'll be like wait don't go hold on hello and she's like waving and she's going to wait a second to see how you guys respond to that. And if somebody's still trying to cast a spell, she's going to counterspell it. Okay, so here's hey, how we'll do this. Because you're running talking. forward, you're running forward to make sure that you can stop this. And you're yes. like, finish me. Uh, we'll do <laughs> we'll do a roll off finish right, me. to see whose spell goes off and holds. Perfect. Uh, to see who can like, okay, so uh, release, Daniel, release, release. roll me a d20, and you roll me a d20, and whoever gets higher is the spell that works. Okay. I, like, slap him across the face for advantage. <laughs> oh, yes. <Jeez. laughs> and you give him guidance if Burnish you want. Me. <laughs> you can guidance him. I'll allow it. I can. <laughs> guidance. <laughs> you roll a d4. Would you nat 20 or you nat one, nat 1 or nat 20? What was it? Two. 
A two. A two. What I did you get? Two. You can So <laughs> you strum your lute, and you begin to feel the spell take hold. Uh, a rev. You begin to get sucked backwards, and for a second, I'm gonna say, for just the second, you stand on this dilapidated old abandoned platform oh shit a jungle where you used to stand stands there no more it's oh. just dead trees <gasps> oh okay and then you counterspell and you are pulled back into this realm <laughs> what do you do guys what do you do no did, did what did it work did right you break my sp- what'd you say what you, the demon's talking do? approaching the demon's talking ah. the demon's talking <laughs> you're there i don't so know what's happening. happening right now <laughs> what, what do you describe your character pi Alewin is a tall, very refined looking um, high elf who has very long, like lilac, pale lilac hair, gray eyes. And she is in um, like all all dark purple. She looks very regal and like she looks like a wizard. I'm not going to lie to you. She's got the wizard (laughs) vibe on. She does not have the hat on. She left. She left that. Not good for running, you know. but she is approaching and you her face is so excited she she is desperate to talk to you guys you what you didn't even wait you <laughs> you have no you have no idea how long this is Ooh. and she okay. stops for a second and notices like looks at all of you and she's definitely looking for something specific and her eyes stop on winter for the longest time before she shifts to Damascus and a rev and looks oh, very confused. <laughs> uh, uh, what? Hello, demon <laughs> person. We come in peace. <laughs> Love you, you mean, so much. <laughs> you mean me? Do I do I look like a demon? And she's gonna look at the cunning and be like, I've spent enough time here. Apparently. He didn't come with you. Oh, uh, okay. he didn't come with you. He sent you back in the library. Okay, I don't know what they look like. Um, but it, this just seems like a place where demons would. Are you not a demon? No, From... actually, you I'm do not. seem too pretty to be a demon, probably. Unless that's part of the whole like Thank Trixie you. thing. In which case, I mean, that from what Arev said, they tend to be pretty. <laughs> that's a good from point. Our sample size of two. <laughs> okay, you might can't... be a demon. I am so surprised to see you guys together. I mean, honestly, oh, it seems odd, but nice. <laughs> Wait, where? She's going to scan the group again. She just, it, it eyes Faza and Gilly and is like, eh, really quick scan by them. <laughs> and she's Fucking like, rude. <laughs> <laughs> where? Where are the others? What others? You... Do you guys know this person? No. No, but she has a lot of features that seem too fit to someone who's described to us. Described to you? What do you mean? Um, what? I recreate uh, Rebella's picture, the like little drawing she had of the purple-haired elf. A a stick figure with, uh, you <laughs> look like this stick figure. Right, <laughs> 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 and hair sort of replica of your face <laughs> with the hat with a, a wizard hat. Sketch. <laughs> You it is just put like up in front of you. Figure. Okay, Damascus. I'm just saying it's it's too convenient. The demon the is trying to make us think that we know her. Are, are, are ever still like on the ground? 
like having oh, slammed okay. his fist into the ground like I remember his having a moment. Well, yeah. He he had a moment where he was back before being ripped here <laughs> and he had that 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 chance to go back and like fulfill his knighthood if you will to like go back and fight and protect the realm protect this man that he loves and like everything and he had this, he 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 was back and he was stepped forward and there was desolation where there should have been hope and he's just ripped back into this whole dimension and is physically like slammed the ground and screamed no and is like staring off into the hellscape because like what's left uh winter demon. kneels down beside you yes what do you want to do demon lady to stop and run over <laughs> demon lady hang on a second i'll run over to a rev not what did you see what happened did, did, did you get yes. to the right place I saw I saw the world that we failed to save Damascus oh do tell immediately you're gonna see this elf pull out a book too and start um she she doesn't touch it with her hand but she's like magically flipping through it and you will see um almost little holographic figures as she's flipping through it as she's she's searching for something. What do you see? What did you see? Do you mean she finished her ritual thing? What? The, the, every, Damn it, Arev, use your words! Roy was dead? What? I was sent back to Damascus. To where, he, specifically? He, he shoots a glance over at this odd looking demon lady it's a really pretty <laughs> high elf <laughs> yeah okay demon thanks demon guys lady, yes <laughs> it's a demon lady <laughs> who looks nothing like a demon at all it's fine <laughs> i mean if anything that's extra reason to be wary <laughs> i'm saying um and He says, You sent me back to a platform, Damascus. I am where there was a jungle, there was where before there was a jungle, there was instead ash. It was raised. The whole place was burned to the ground. And I you sent me back to a place where my home was burned to the ground. And I might have been there for six seconds, but the silence may as well have lasted the rest of my life. This figure that you don't know has tears welling up in her eyes and she like approaches and drops down like next to you and just literally enwraps you in a hug. And she uh, starts to cry like gross sobbing. You weren't supposed to go there. <laughs> I don't know how. <laughs> And she's she's just crying. Uh, um, what? What do you do? <laughs> I <laughs> he, he like shakes his head for a second, and if anything, the display of emotion like seems so like absurd in a good way that like he has a moment where like he sort of. It, his mind you ever have when you're so lost that your like mind kind of like steps above it 
And then you're like looking down and you're like, oh, hang on a second. And your your mind kind of like engages. Has that ever happened to anyone? Oh, yeah, yeah. A hundred percent. That's like a <laughs> full ADHD thing, I think. <laughs> so he, he was he was so lost and so like in despair. And then like th- they come over and like there's just this well of emotion. And like there's this moment where a rev's like, hold up. <laughs> it's just like <clears throat> kind of rises up and he goes. Are you okay? Um, you guys are missing people, and it's it's just very weird <laughs> to see you. And she like looks at Damascus, the two of you together, you know, like this. And where's <laughs> you're gonna see her? Um, put her hand on on her um, chest for a second and cast um, purge on herself and relax a little bit uh damascus for just a second there you feel bella just the slightest second when that magic was cast you feel bella's power who feels by the way a lot very much removed in this place Mm -hmm. Mm mm-hmm and uh, I'm assuming you look where the power is coming from. You like you look to see where it comes from. Mm-hmm. And as you look at uh, Elaywin cast this uh, magic, just just slightly, you see a fairy dragon tattoo, very familiar fairy dragon ta- a tattoo of one, uh, hide under her shirt. Have I seen Callum's tattoo? Like where is yeah. Callum's tattoo? It moves. Okay. Callum's tattoo is alive and moves when it decides it it's moving. It's a origin lot of was the times shoulder. when you talk to it, it comes up and just like listens. Mm-hmm. You have a blessing from Bella, Demon Lady. <laughs> and, Demon Lady, <laughs> and you what have? How do you know Talon? Why a, you have a, that a what? tattoo? A, a what? I'm sorry, say that again. Blessing. A blessing from from who? Who? From Bella. Oh, heavens no. Um, not exactly. <laughs> and how the hell did you just channel her power? Because I can do that, and I will. Can I cast Eldritch Blast here? Why don't you give it a go? What I do you try, do? I try and like shoot the floor just to show (laughs) the little beam you cast Elders Blast and you shoot the floor and that gold energy that normally comes out of it it's there for a moment and then it kind of crackles and turns green like it's more more of balm trying to fill that spell for you she's it's like she's there but she's she's weak distant Mm. Mm mm-hmm that sort of it's you're gonna explain who you are and what the fuck is going on in, in just a second <laughs> rev you i don't know what you saw and i can't imagine how traumatic it must have been but you y'all were right about one thing if we went back to the right place it sounds like we just went at the wrong time and maybe in a place where time doesn't exist, that's something we can fix the next time we try it. You might have seen something horrible, yeah. but that don't mean it's stuck that way. Maybe it's... You still feel no, it. Damascus, maybe... Maybe it's less of a... when we are, and in this place, it's more of a where we are. What if it's not like... Maybe time doesn't exist here, but you know, t- time could still be represented. So maybe there's a physical location in this ding, space ding, that ding would means yes, though, right? <laughs> of course. But keep going. Wait, so do you know how to get us back to the right time? Do you know like about this stuff? 
Yes, of course. But continue. Well, it, like, I'm here we go. Natural thing in the world. Well, okay. it is. Just Obviously. here, it's a little, a little weird, but we'll figure right. that out later. I'm going to ask okay. the question, so who the hell are you? Don't even worry the, about it. Who, who the hell are you and what the hell is going on? You talk mm-hmm. like you know us, like you expect to see someone else. Who are you expecting to see? How the hell do you know us? I don't know who the hell you are from anyone. And why would you I wonder if me? did you did you guys hit the ground or anything when you kind of whoo, came in? Mm, you little no. rattled around. Are you I, sure? I pet my tressum that I landed on that I flew down on the back of. I have a giant flying cat. Mm. It transforms back <laughs> into a little tressum and and like gets on your shoulder. All right, and, and you're, you're saying cast spell again. You're saying emotionally rattled. I don't look familiar to you at all. Did Other you? than uh, I show the little expense of the... All right. Um, where, where's Callum and Talon? How do you know Where Callum is Talon? Talon? Is Talon with us? He is not. Okay. <laughs> he stayed in the apartment. No, he did not. He did not stay in the apartment, but he has Trixie there, and he ha- he abandoned you guys the moment Trixie showed up. How right. do you know Callum? You see uh, Winter kind of, like, sit back on his heels, and and he's giving you this look like he does not trust anything that's going on. Um, and he casts Zone of Truth. Ah, oh, fuck it. Fuck. <laughs> <laughs> Everybody wisdom saving throws. Everybody. You can roll for him too. Uh, what's his DC? Mm. I, I Well, so A, I choose to fail. Mm-hmm. Uh, B, his DC is 17. DC, and, wisdom 17. And C, I it's a, a charisma saving throw, not a wisdom saving throw. Oh, charisma. Uh, okay, okay. My bad. I just say I that because 12. wizards are very good at wisdom. Not so good at charisma. I passed it with wisdom and failed with charisma. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so you failed it. That's what we—that's what he's going for. He goes, She'll tell the truth now. He looks real okay. smug about it. It's a good trick. Mm, how clever of you. Sometimes. It must be clever. She couldn't lie. She actually thinks it's clever. Sarcasm. Oh, hang on. We don't have. He time. looks a little like when you say that and actually point it out. He's like, "Oh shit, yeah." <laughs> like he looks real <laughs> proud of himself. <laughs> I mean, it was, but Winter, you're always very impressive. Like you know that we all love you very much. You're very talented. I should cast this spell all the time. <laughs> so how do you know Callum? Um, I've known Callum almost my whole life. We met when I was young. She telling the truth. Should I go into more detail? Would you like a play-by-play? We met at his home. Is it my teacher? You know these two from like here? here? Sort of. A little different. So then, how about you give me a reason? To make sure that I don't have to protect him from you by killing you where you stand. Oh, sure. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry, I'm serious. really dying at her laughing at all of this this shit. <laughs> oh, this this um <clears throat> this didn't quite go as planned, I suppose. Are you sure none of you well, not you, you or you and she looks at Gilly. Faza and then Winter. <laughs> um, besides the three of you, like you don't recognize me, but you two, nothing other than the picture, not the picture. Just disregard the picture. Other than the picture, do you want to roll? Uh, do you want to roll some sort of like history? See if you can yeah, get your yeah, brain yeah. going a bit. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. Jiggle something. Or her brain. Everybody can roll one. I because okay. I'll, I'll I'll have her come up with maybe why. Uh, 16. 16. Oh. 16. All right. I'm rolling low today. <laughs> 16. And a hey! 16. Okay. With straight 16s across the board, um, 
because you feel foggy almost like when you look at her it's for a second there it's hard to look and like keep your eyes on her face like your brain just wants to forget it for some reason. She's a demon. Sorry. She's a demon. <laughs> She's a demon. Kill her. She's Makes a witch. Kill her. It's demon lady. With a no, 16. Which is what float. Oh, that's true. She starts you... to float. No. <laughs> she starts to float in the air just for no reason. Um, You know that. You. Okay. You know that. You know they know you. They know. They should know you. So either their memories were taken from them which is done by spell or by creature but they must they've forgotten you in some way from from then till now you know how you know what happened oh shit all right this definitely did not go as planned wonderful do you have any more questions because i'm just as confused as the rest of you are you should not kill me because i'm here for callum and talon and i suppose the rest of you but sort of didn't want to let that one go so early i suppose personally i have like Mm. a billion questions not Entirely so to stop her. Hey, Gilly, I, I have back one. You up. Ask them all. I have one. Sure. It's not for you. And she points at, at uh, Alewin. She goes, it's for you. And she points at at, uh, at Gilly. She goes, why do you flirt with everyone but me? <laughs> <laughs> You're playing questions. <laughs> That's not true. <laughs> one. I do sometimes. <laughs> I'm just not sure you've noticed. Two, I don't have to ask this. I'm, I'm sorry. Rebecca. I'm just, it's fine. Yeah, we should probably stay on task. Um, if you want to. <laughs> just saying it would be nice. If you're going to flirt with everyone, maybe you should flirt with me too, because I've been around longer. Okay, I will. You're super hot. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> so are you. I'm putting it on the to-do list. <laughs> Wait, what now? <laughs> not, not that way. <laughs> not that way. <laughs> so you're here for Callum and Talon. And Talon. And somehow and... you know Callum and Talon. And you have his and... tattoo. Yes, uh, I knew a Rev and Damascus as well, but. You not so much, and also you and you. And she looks at Faza and Gilly, respectively. I'm new. That actually makes sense. All right. It, it does. Well. But faza has been with us since... I met her about three minutes after I met you. Really? Where? There's a giant cloud of necrotic not was it necrotic what was that giant cloud that was attacking them we met outside the we met on the campgrounds you had a giant tent lights. that oh. had everything you could possibly need in it I was trying to get away from Bella any of this striking a bell <laughs> you okay, and fucking then please her. Bill off midget oh, I don't you right. don't is this oh, Bill related Ignore all that. I did say that. You, uh, you, and uh, Faza was talking about meeting you, mm-hmm. Damascus, not yeah. Pi. Yes. Um, I mean, the lights are Belloth related. You would know about the lights. They yeah. go off there every five hundred years. Big event. That's what started this whole campaign. Yep. Um, I'm at. I'm so confused. <laughs> That that zone of truth where, thing. Where um, did you? How do you know us? <laughs> Since you remember what the hell's going on, why don't you start? Wait. What? So we're in zone of truth, right? Mm-hmm. Yes. So does that mean that we're compelled to say true things, even if we may not remember that they're true? No. That would have been convenient. You well, say yeah, your right. truth as you know it. 
Okay, because I, I was gonna say like if I were to like turn to this person, like maybe like I might say something that is true, but like then be like, why am I saying that? That's not true. No. Mm-hmm. Okay. You have to know it. Okay. Mm-hmm. Okay. Damn. Okay. So I, I was really hoping. <laughs> You're like so. You she's try. got. She's got the tattoo, and we've got the picture that sort of looks like her. Should we maybe just sort of temporarily agree that we should probably trust this person because it seems like something weird and magical's going on? <laughs> I mean, hang on, here, she was this? just about to tell us something, <laughs> and then maybe like leave, hopefully. Hey, stranger. Yeah, you say what you were going to say. Don't let me interrupt you. Yeah, yeah. How do you? No, you keep know? going. Keep talking. It's it's fine. <laughs> it's very fine. Just keep on going. I I should know more about you. What was your name again? I'm oh. Gilly. Hello. Oh, hello, Gilly. Oh. <laughs> Gilly, we're gonna have to have a talk about sharing names. That has gotten us in a lot of trouble in the past. <laughs> I love you. I keep forgetting where the Feywild, and I just constantly get my name. <laughs> I know so you know. Just, you're just here. Here it is. Twenty four seven. Yeah. Care yeah. to return the favor? You seem to know you the should... rest of us well enough. You should know my name by now. I mean, that's apparently you don't, Damascus. Um, jog your memory. I'm a laywin. Wait, did we say his name? We didn't say his name. No, I don't think Ooh. you just know his name. Okay, that's more am... evidence. Telling the truth, just like and I you... know Rev and oh. Callum and Talon, who are not here. You... No, again, no. just no. mentioning out loud, which I would like to speak to both of them. Yes, I... that. Random question. You say, you know, mm. Talon. Uh, yes. Tea or coffee? <laughs> Talon likes tea, and I drink coffee. Good answer. Callum's not really a fan of either. There's been a couple of times where we've mixed them together, but he didn't find that very funny. I look at the group. At the very least, she makes a compelling case. But you don't know me, you're Winter? That's Winter. I'm Faiza. Um, she looks at Winter for longer than she looks at Faiza. So, what the fuck? Do I not I exist? <laughs> Look, we I know, know I'm Winter's pretty. Hot. Look, stranger. But that looks like you know me. I'm trying to figure out if I knew you. Because you called you called Winter. Yes. That's my name. Mm-hmm. I'm trying to figure out if I, in fact, know you. Who you're looking at right now you, looks very familiar to you. Yeah. By the way. Yeah. Um, Maybe a little more beefy, like well fed, very no scars at mm. all. No scars whatsoever. Um like he was the best version of himself. Okay. Um I'm gonna it's a twin situation. Do this in her head, so I'm gonna message this uh demon lady. This demon <laughs> <laughs> I cannot um, even know her name now. Go... She's a demon. <laughs> What name did you know him by? Question. Mm -hmm. Does that message inside my head, do I have to answer Zone of Truth as a message in my head? (laughs) You don't have to answer Zone of Truth, period. You can choose to remain silent. That is is just if you want them to trust you. Okay. Okay. Uh, I was just going to say, I don't know him by winter. I'm not sure what his name truly is, then. That's it. Uh-huh. She's not lying. She's telling the truth. She's also a little confused. So I think that gives you enough information to draw a conclusion. <laughs> yeah. About that part of it. Damascus was already drawing some conclusions, but mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. doesn't like where they're going. And... Right. So... Um... <laughs> you still haven't told us how you know 
I say you go. You grew up with Callum. Fine, I'll buy mm-hmm. that. I'll assume that that means you pretty much have the same story with Talon. Grew up with him, something like that. Yes, and we traveled together. And Rev, even though mm. he keeps looking at me as if I am a demon of sorts, we also traveled together. Where and when? All over, right after I graduated, after we uh, tried to find stars and other things. So, when did we? You just like her, her face like shifts a little bit. And she, like, you can tell that the thoughts that she's having are kind of hard to say out loud. Like she's remembering things that she kind of wants to at this moment. What did you ask? I'm sorry, Dan. I didn't hear. I, what I was asked. That's okay. I uh, asked when we stopped traveling. Um, about five years ago. Yes. Why? <laughs> that would be the next question. I didn't want to ask. Well, we finished our mission, I guess. Successfully? Yes. So... I have a couple of questions for you, and they're pretty quick, I think. Sure. Do you intend to harm us? (laughs) Why would I do that? It was not a no. Yeah, let me (laughs) try again. (laughs) (laughs) Gilly's the one like, no, I don't think I like that answer. I love it. By traveling with you, will we come to harm? Not if I can help it. A little better. That's a little better. That is better. Still not just a no. Well, even though I would like to predict the future. Yeah. (laughs) I mean, are you going to be the reason that I get to go save Callum? Well, I had kind of hoped he was here already, so (laughs) I'm going to be finding him and uh, Talon, apparently. We heard him. We heard him. We were on a platform, um, Mm -hmm. and there were like a bunch of dead bodies coming up at us. And then we heard him scream for a rev. All right. And then now we're here. And then we left, which is not a great situation for him to be in, so we should probably go back as soon as we possibly can. So if you could help with that, that would be, like, really great. So you... You were traveling here, but you did not leave with Callum. We didn't intend to travel here. Purpose. Traveling would be... Yeah. We didn't know we were coming here. (laughs) Right. Forcibly yanked. <laughs> yanked. <Sheet>. Um, <laughs> it was very unpleasant. <laughs> yes, but he was not with you when you left, and you don't know where he is now. Well, we oh, yeah. left him in Fawn. All right. We know when he is. <laughs> All right. Then we went to go fight something. And Mm -hmm. he stayed at the hotel. Surprising. And then he, like, joined us later. Mm -hmm. But not in time to be sucked through whatever bullshit portal with us. Big red gooey portal. Mm -hmm. And then also, our Rev's brother is back there, too. But he's closer to us, so I'm not sure why he didn't come through. 
Brother's that one's weird. Brother. All right. Which which one? Which one? Yeah. Out of curiosity. It's an interesting question. <laughs> He's got brother? one brother and one other sibling. Uh mm-hmm. here. <laughs> In this timeline. Mm-hmm. If they, if they say brother though, you know who they're you know who they're replaying uh referring okay. to. They're referring to Roy. Okay. All right. And you didn't think to bring Roy along. Yeah. Oh, we, she it knows Roy too. Choice. Yeah, you would have yeah, so, yes, yes, met Roy. Yes, yeah, right. I, I, Roy. Know. I yeah. know. I know. Billy's you keeping a tally. <laughs> like a pros <laughs> cons <laughs> list. <laughs> Killing's gonna stab her in her sleep. <laughs> so she's gotta know us, right? Except, well, I mean, she's gotta know you, right? I'm. Just, I feel really left out right now. If you want, I can pretend like I know you, both of you. Well, Gilly, now I know you. I'm. I'm sorry. I suppose it was rude. And your name? And she'll look at Faza. <laughs> just told you, <laughs> it's Faza. Oh, sorry. <laughs> There's a lot going on in my head right now. I apologize. There's um, a I'm moment, a by the way, when she says that, that her eyes go red for a second. Where they, there's just this sheen that goes across them. Is that um, a thing that Faisa normally does? It has been lately. Interesting. Since a certain goddess has okay. been put inside her. <laughs> they used to do, we'll the, when to she know. was angry, they'd go black. Ah. <sighs> And now they've got this like red that goes across them. It's not concerning in the least. Thing there. Does that happen a lot? Were you casting something and I'm just unfamiliar with it? It's quite a stark contrast. Where you know, yellow to red there. First of all, they're orange. Wow. I'm sorry. <laughs> Second of all. <laughs> Second of all. <laughs> right back to the water there. The bit returns. Um <laughs> Second of all, if I was casting something, you wouldn't know. All right, sure. all right. But <clears throat> you do recognize that magic that just went through her. Okay, that's definitely from Iowan. That's that's definitely the a deity <laughs> from Iowan. Interesting. I mean, I knew, I knew, but it's it's different to see it in person. I suppose I should stop talking um winter is looking really proud of himself um oh all right well um hmm. do you have a way for us to get back yes well i specifically don't but we'll have to go back to the house around the estate and then we'll sort it out there because I'm a little whew, um here. I can Is cast this... magic, but it's like it's it's a little different. What I can usually do, I don't have my full battery, so to speak. Um You've been here for five years? Don't believe so. By hmm. Honestly, we'd have to get out of here for me to guess. I don't think I've been here for five years, but it's a little woo here. So, God, I hate it here. Um, Do you know the cunning? Yes, oh, that's a good question. Take me, Sam. All right, that's where I came from. Shall we? And <laughs> like it starts walking that way. Let's go meet. And that's where we'll friends. call today's <laughs> session. <laughs> Yay! Yeah. <laughs> GG. Oh, this is gonna be GG. a fun reunion. This is gonna be chaos. <laughs> this is gonna be actual <laughs> chaos. Um, Hi, Chad. I'm not mad back, in real guy. life. I'm not a mad person. Oh, for sure. <laughs> I'm just, I'm just so good. I'm, I'm just role playing a hurt person who's mad. It's I'm, cool. I'm very happy. She, <laughs> she is really mad that you left Callum. Like that. That was a choice that. Oh Arev my God! Made. Look at this. That's this how mad happened. he was. He's so mad he broke. Yeah, he's so mad. He's, he's so, so mad, mad he broke. His... <laughs> Holy shit! He smashed his camera. <laughs> oh, Alex. smash! All right, let's do let's do a quick sign off before we lose James. James, do you want to say your stuff? Uh, yeah. Look, you can still hear me, right? <laughs> mm-hmm. yeah. Yes. 
Yeah, cool. I don't know what the heck's up with my camera. But anyways, um, hi, I'm James. Um, look at my lovely, beautiful, sexy, very gay portrait uh, um, of Arnav Dezark, who is uh, my wonderful, of course, Circle of Stars druid, uh, who shares a body with Varian Arbor, the smarmy sort of storm sorcerer, who you didn't get to hear much from today, but I'm sure you'll hear from at a later date. Oh, speaking um, of Varian, um, you don't have to roll while you're here. Ooh. Oh, Varian's not coming out. <laughs> oh, well, then I suppose you have to really pay attention to a future session uh, when uh, <laughs> he'll show up again. That poor fucker. Um, but yeah, uh, other than that, you can find me as Mazrix or Mazrix24 pretty much throughout the internet. Um, most notably on TikTok trying to leave uh, nice comments under people's posts and uh, or our discord and uh, i'm sure you'll see thousands of those links in our chat at different times i see one myself right now um but that's that's it for me um so somebody else talk while i try and have my camera not be on the fritz uh dan uh i'll be next hi everybody i'm dan you can find me as the speed of candy on all of the various internet places uh, tonight, I have been Mask of Silver, the half-elf bard warlock who wants to know what the fuck. Just what the fuck. Um, we'll send it over to uh, Caro. I am Caro. Uh, you can find me at Im- Imaginary Caro on TikTok um, and also on the Discord. And I've been playing Gilly, who also wants to know what the fuck. That's a co- co- common question around here. <laughs> Pyrea. Hello, everybody. Um, I'm Pyrea. You can find me on all the socials as Pyrea. Um, I am back as Alewin Elanthus, the chronology wizard. Um, yeah, she also equally is like, what the fuck is going on here? <laughs> because some stuff didn't go quite as planned, if you haven't noticed. Mm-hmm. So, uh, Jess, if you want to wrap it up and i play everyone else uh i <laughs> am your shenanigans <laughs> uh i i sneeze stars um and you can find me everywhere as i sneeze stars um we'll see you guys on monday where we continue in narak which is for the first time you guys know now know what the pain dimension is called the pain dimension oh my god Yes, it is basically like Pinhead Dimension. That's where you are. (laughs) Terrifying. Yeah. Um, Yeah, we'll see you guys next Monday uh, where we'll continue this. Okay, I love you. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.